All right, good evening, everybody. Um, I call this meeting to order at 6.04 p.m., a uh, regular meeting of the Board of Directors, Tuesday, May 16th, um, in the community room 970 Embarcadero, Del Mar. Um, I'd like to announce that this meeting is being recorded. Secretary Brandt, will you take roll call? Director Bertrand. Present. Director Jordan. Director Brandt. Present. Director Freeman. Present. Director Hedges. Here. Director Geis. Present. Director Thurlow. Here. Okay, we have a quorum. Uh, with six directors present, uh, Director Jordan absent. Uh, 1.4, same uh, item that we've had on here. Uh, if you haven't turned in your forms, um, please get them. Um, I'll be placing in an agenda item for AB 1825 on the next agenda. Um, I've reviewed um, the current special at CSDA. Uh, more to come on that. Um, at this time, we'll do uh, board member reports. Um, and uh, Secretary Brandt, would you like to go first? Yeah, sure. So the first thing I have to report is that I sent out a uh, late agenda attachment. Um, I made it available to the public um, here at 970 Market of Mueller, uh, and I forwarded it to Jonathan, a self-governance initiative who distributed it. Um, and that agenda attachment is something that I neglected to include in the original agenda. So uh, it pertains to item 4.3. Um, I'm going to request that we pull item 2.1 from consent and consider an alternative that has minor edits. Uh, I apologize for getting that one to everyone so late. I actually just finished printing them. Um, in any event, there's a minor modification to the recommendations that the policy committee put forward. So I'd ask if all the directors, specifically uh, my colleagues on policy committee, would consider that. Um, the main change uh, is something that I can talk about within um, the item when it comes up. Um, regarding uh, records of the board, um, I would appreciate if we all make a good faith effort to include all the relevant attachments when um, we are, when forward them to me so that I can send them out with the agenda. Uh, the reason for this is because from time to time, members of the public will want to access these records. They're just board attachments and I'll be granting all those requests. Um, and so it makes it easier for me if they're uh, in electronic format and they're distributed when the other attachments go out. Um, and likewise, I would appreciate if members of the public who are interested in reviewing board documents, uh, if you just send me an email, I'm definitely going to send you back the document, um, especially if it's just a board attachment. Um, I've had to fulfill a Public Records Act request re recently, and that's kind of a copious process. So if it's just a you know regular document, then I'd be happy to distribute it to whoever uh, wants that document if you just send me an email. Um, let's see, uh, I have the opportunity to meet with a number of incoming Associated Student Senators and Executive and uh, we've had the opportunity to uh, have some of them here uh, introducing themselves to us. I'm really excited for potential opportunities for collaboration with Associated Students. Um, I think the last thing is that I'm becoming increasingly convinced that um, we need to attain some sort of general manager and that that needs to be priority number one for the district. Um, given that the service discussions we're starting to have are starting to evolve and get uh, further along in the process, um, I think that it is really crucial that we have that person. Um, and I think that it's really going to help us overcome some of the uh, sort of struggles that we've had in terms of uh, having to deal with structure and process uh, because we haven't had that point person, that general manager person. Um, and I really think that needs to be our priority going forward. Um, you know, whether it's the financial disclosure issue that we went through with the interns and the question of whether or not interns who normally aren't subject to financial disclosure requirements do have to file, um, I think that it would be much, I mean, it, we need a general matter. So will that be a future agenda item? That will be Perfect. a future cool. agenda so item that, that I'll be asking for. And that's my report. Thank you. Uh, Director Hedges? Um, nothing to report other than continued to um, conversations out there in the community with uh, uh, people uh, wanting a very general update on um, my continued confidence in the process and uh, uh, I continue since I continue to have that confidence in the process uh, that is what I've been outreaching with and um, you know, stating that I, I think this is uh, a work in progress but yet it's a work where the progress looks good also. Director Freeman. 
The noise that sounds like a dental drill has just stopped. It makes me feel, it was driving me crazy. Um, okay. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah, that, yeah, so the uh, um, only thing I would have to report during re director reports, I'm not certain if it would go here or during public comment. Um, there's somebody who provided a uh, statement for during, like, then spent some time talking to me about their issue during uh, yesterday, and um, I have a letter from them to read. Cool, uh, we'll do that during public, public comment. comment. Okay. Any, anything else, though? Uh, everything will come up during agenda items again. Thank you. Uh, Director Thurlow. Um, Director Brandt, can you remind us and remind the public what we've decided on for uh, formation committee meetings? I don't uh, think we can do that to uh, direct, director's reports. Is it just for a scheduling thing? Yeah, totally for just so the, the public knows. Yeah, I think I mean, I'd be happy to yeah. say it as a director comment. Yeah. but I don't want I don't want to be wrong. Oh, okay, okay. No, well, we decided on uh, Mondays. I believe it's the I'm going to get it wrong. The second and fourth, I yes. believe Mondays. Yes, yeah. um, so it's the second and fourth Mondays, um, and they start at 10 a.m. And they're in this building. That's correct. Thank you. That's all I have. Thank you. Check your guys. As the old guys forget what happened at just the last time. <laughs> uh, just in terms of formation, we did change our meeting date to the second and the fourth. That gives us a little bit more lag time to get our agenda out, just in case uh, this um, the directors uh, refer something to us, we can get it on our agenda. Um, Another thing that we talked about, just uh, following up on Director Brandt's comments, we had a good discussion about a, uh, Spencer brought an item to the last formation committee. Uh, we decided to work on it a little bit more. Um, my idea, we need to make it more of an independent contractor. I was actually working on that document today to bring back to the formation committee and then to move that, that, that forward. Um, personally, myself, I'm going to be gone from the 1st to the 15th of um, June, so I'll be missing the, the, first, the first meeting of the month of the directors, and I'll miss the first meeting of the month of the formation committee. Um, I'll work with formation committee at the next formation committee meeting about whether we want to hold that meeting or cancel that meeting, and then how I'll you know try and prepare the agenda for that meeting, and then I'll probably need some assistance on the following agenda. We could put out a draft one, but we might want to add some items to it. So um, I think I also uh, was tasked with the responsibility to uh, solicit information and hopefully education from a Lion Insurance Company because they're an insurance company that was recommended by the county and by the uh, CDSA. And so I've put a couple of calls into them and haven't got a response, but uh, hopefully I can complete that and get a response before the next formation committee meeting. And that's all I have. Awesome. Thank you. Director Freeman. I'm sorry. I just come up with something I should have reported. Sure. Um, so at the uh, special meeting, um, I was directed to represent the district at the Our House, Our Home Spring Fest run by the Community Housing Office. Uh, my intern, Stephen Perot, and I um, were out there uh, for a number of hours. Uh, it turns out that almost no one showed up to that event, and so we did not have an opportunity to speak to many people. Um, we did also provide a um, uh, informational uh, sheet of paper that just provided the list of powers that our district is empowered with in the hope of making people be inspired about things that could happen with the community services district. Um, additionally, uh, at the last meeting, uh, we were directed to collect Form 700s, and so uh, Stephen filled out a Form 700, uh, and uh, this weekend we uh, had it turned in on Monday and signed copies now. Yeah, so. Thank you. Cool. Uh, I'll give my report. I uh, have a lot to report, so I wrote it down. But um, So starting off, I've been requested uh, by the Vice Chancellor of Student Affairs to attend um, the follow-up meeting to the sexual assault sit-in um, from May 3rd. The follow-up meeting will take place tomorrow night. Um, and that, for any members of the public who would like to attend, will be at the Humanity and Social Science Buildings in room uh, 1174. Um, That'll be with the Chancellor, uh, the Vice Chancellor of Student Affairs and the student activists who uh, are leading this effort. Um, on May 2nd, I spoke in support of Assembly Bill 722 in Sacramento at the Assembly Local Government Committee. Uh, the bill passed the committee almost unanimously. There was only a one no vote, and it was based on the fact that uh, Assembly Bill 3 bypassed LACCO, so it wasn't uh, based on anything related to 722. 
Um, but after uh, the bill passed hearing, um, there have been two uh, floor oppositions registered, uh, one of which by Santa Barbara LAFCO and the other by the California Special Districts Association. Um, from what I've been told, it's not a high priority of CSDA, but they have taken a position of opposition. Um, another thing, on Wednesday, June 14th, from 9 to 3, so all day, there will be a free training put on by CSDA um, entitled The ABCs of the California Public Records Act, the Public Records Act, Records Retention, and the Digital Workplace. It's going to be down in Camarillo, so about an hour away. Um, but I am interested in attending. If anyone else is, definitely tell, tell my comment. let me know. Great. Um, and one of the workshops that will be really good, I think, for any of us who were interested, is the journey to digital transformation, creating a digital workplace. Um, I know we've had a lot of confusion about what we can do with the website. Hopefully, uh, that will provide some clarity. Um, and then on May 8th, I attended the Isla Vista SAFE meeting, and um, the group continued to discuss uh, sexual assault in Isla Vista. There was also a Deltopia recap. Um, I joined the sexual assault working group, which will be meeting uh, in June for its first meeting. Um, and then since the special meeting held on this, uh, this past uh, Thursday, the 11th, I um, submitted a written request for formal advice to the FPPC on the filing of um, economic statements of economic interest for interns. Um, I also uh, received informal advice from an FPPC consultant during the call hours. Um, I also have been in communications with UCSB's chief campus counsel about this issue, um, and that was as directed by the motion going forward, figuring out the best practices. Um, and then lastly, on a Saturday night at 1 in the morning, I uh, received a call from uh, someone very close to me, someone who I love very much in this community. Um, to hear that they had just been violently assaulted on the 6-7 block of Trigo, someone really close to me. Um, and not just them, but two other friends that they were with. Um, they were attacked by a gang of seven people, uh, really viciously attacked, punched in right above uh, the left ear, thrown to the ground, thrown against a car, a uh, glass bottle thrown at them. Um, we, I interacted with the foot patrol that night and had great response, but this really um, underscores why we're all here and why this district was created, not just to change the overall big picture of Vila Vista, but to prevent so many of these small tragedies that affect the culture here. So I am uh, honored to serve along with all of you and uh, as committed as ever to our work. So thank you. Um, yes? You mentioned the sit-in follow-up meeting tomorrow yes. night. Uh, what time is it? 5 p.m. Um, and that concludes uh, board reports, unless anyone else has one. No. Okay. Uh, now moving on to uh, the consent agenda. Um, first, uh, since I wasn't here the last time that you guys did uh, do this consent agenda, did you uh, just ask if someone has pulled an item? Or? Yeah, yeah. And I'd like to pull, I'll start off by saying I'd like to pull 2.1. Okay. So 2.1 we will um, consider separately. Um, out of the other uh, items on the consent agenda, I'd like to take off 2.3. Um, that was a typo. Uh, we uh, failed to put the date number there for, for the April meeting. So uh, for that, we'll just have to approve it at the next one. No big deal. Um, anyone else have anything to pull? No. Is there any public comment on any of these items still being considered in the consent agenda? Is there a motion? Uh, motion to approve the balance of the consent agenda. Second. OK. And let's note that that is without um, item 2.1 and 2.3. Those have been taken off. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Well, I'm actually, I'm abstaining for this because I wasn't here for, um, for the May 2nd. So that'll, uh, the motion passes um, with five ayes, uh, one abstention, one absent. No one uh, voting no. So uh, now at this time we'll go to public comment. Um, at this time any well, member... Well, we got to consider the last item, or the poll item. Oh, we're going to do that here rather than... Yes, yes. Oh, yes. okay. So um, I can kind of get the ball rolling. So everyone has, I think, a copy of the uh, conflict of interest code recommendation for me that I brought to the board. Um, so it's completely identical to the one that policy committee recommended with uh, a slight modification, and that is instead of 
the secretary being designated as the filing officer. Um, now the secretary is acting as the filing official and forwards a copy of each statement to the clerk recorder who will be designated as the filing officer. Um, I got in contact with Sheila Hesed County Elections and uh, what she told me is that um, structuring it in that way would allow us to take advantage of the county's um, electronic filing system uh, so that we wouldn't have to uh, keep making trips back and down the 101, up another 101 to, uh, to turn in those forms. Um, I think it'll be overall a lot more easier for all of us. Um, and uh, I also asked her about what other special districts are doing and if it's common um, for that to be the arrangement. She said yes, um, particularly IVRPD has uh, the same sort of designation um, where they have, I don't know if it's a secretary or a clerk or someone who's the uh, filing official, they file it to the clerk or quarter, or yeah, they file it to the clerk or quarter and then the clerk or quarter is the filing officer. Um, so it's basically the county uh, doing a service uh, on our behalf rather than the secretary having to do it. Jack yeah, uh, uh, Mike, I just had a quick question, which is, um, wh why are we restating the language from the FPPC? Um, in other words, Form 700 comes with like a 15-page document that essentially lays out all of the different categories and what they mean and what the conflicts. So I'm just wondering, why don't we just why don't we just reference that document and say that's the district policy? What I worry about in this one is, is this exactly identical to the FPPC? And if it's not exactly identical, then in effect we're we're adopting um, a conflict of interest policy that may be in conflict or may not be lined up with the FPPC's 700 document. Mm -hmm. So what I'll say is that um, the first thing is that the Political Reform Act requires that we, instead of just adopting something by reference, that we spell out the entire policy in our okay. policies. Okay. Um, and I think that the reason is so that we are all familiar with okay. the said policy. Okay. Um, and we do have it adopted by reference right now, but this would overwrite that. Um, and so as, is it in terms of what is it's based off of, it's uh, largely based off of, if not identical to the Goleta Water District's policy um, on uh, conflict of interest, um, which, I mean, we did a pretty good job, I think, going through that in policy committee, and I would definitely say that that uh, document to me looked very legally vetted, if that was your question. No, but go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, Director Freeman. So I, I have a different understanding of the history and why we did this. Um, so uh, the computer scientist in me very much would just refer to just refer to it, and that's what we did in the initial stub version of this conflict of interest code. My um, remembrance is that the FPP, the, 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 the state law on conflict of interest codes specifically just states that a reference to the existing law is considered to be a sufficient conflict of interest code in order to have that. Um, we got, um, I will describe it, my personal description, as very strong feedback from Director Geis that we should um, spell it out. And this also falls in through, into line with uh, descriptions that we had been given generally um, from Director Jordan about if we, which I agree with, which is that if we provide more information in our policy manual and we make it so that, look, if you just follow our policies, that's like a narrowing of the law. Like if you, if you work within the boundaries of what's in our manual, you are supposed to already be lawful, then you don't have to read all of the law to be lawful. Um, and so then, and so given the fact that I did agree with that feedback, we then took Director Geis's um, policy uh, suggestions, which he provided as public record at our last meeting to policy committee, went through them in detail, made my only minor edits to them, and put them in our policy. So. Yeah. So Director Brand, what, what I would just well, say, like, well, that's a completely good practice, and that's what we try to do as a policy committee. The reason that we brought this is because we are required to have a specific policy that uh, does three things, that it designates positions, that it um, uh, establishes disclosure categories, and that it incorporates um, government code section, uh, or the code of regulations section 18730, which are the three things that are required by law that we have in a conflict of interest code. This is information that was given to me by Sheila Hess at the clerk recorder's office. Director, guys, did you have something? I, I, I just think it's a much more understandable 
document of what we're trying to accomplish. And you start reading all those regulations and it's really difficult. You know, I had that concern with the interns having to read all those regulations and go, what are we doing? Because I used to say that, you know, when I was the elected auditor for a long time, said, so what is all this stuff? Um, so I only have one comment on the document itself. On the designated positions, I'm not sure if we have to state any designated positions that we haven't as of yet established. So if we haven't established a general manager, when Sheila Hess gets this and it goes into her electronic system, she's going to be sending done notices to somebody that you haven't filed. You know, and you, you need to file your statement of economic interest. And if there is no general manager position, I don't think it needs to get listed until we actually have a general manager position. And so then if we get an index, if we go the route of having an independent contractor be our acting general manager, I'm not sure that they would file under our conflict of interest code. I think they'd go towards that consultant conflict of interest code, all the discussion we had last week. So I'm not so sure that if we go that direction on the general manager and our attorney, that they need to be on this list. And then the same goes with the treasurer. Since we don't have an employee as our treasurer and the county treasurer already files his conflict of interest, I don't think, I'm not so sure he has to be on here. And then I don't know if we have to be redundant with the secretary since the secretary is just a title for the for the director. So it seems to me that the designated positions so far are just our seven directors. Um, but I, I don't know. I try. I don't know what Sheila would say to that. Director mm -hmm. Brown. Well, no, I think I think that's a really good question because as you're saying that, I'm thinking that that quite likely is the case after the conversation that I had with her, I didn't really like dig deep to try to figure yeah. that out because it didn't spark my interest at the time. But if everyone else is comfortable with it, um, I would move that we send this back to policy committee. Yeah, I would too. Yeah, I'm comfortable with that. All right, is, uh, do we want a second for that? Or do we just want to um, open that back up in policy committee? We're just moving just this, I just want to be clear that we're not moving the entire 2.1 or moving 2.1B conflict of interest back to policy committee. We're, cons we're just considering the policy in policy committee, or the draft policy that we have right now and making edits to it. No, I'm, I'm, I'm just, 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 just point of clarification that we're separating out 2.1A, which is amend policy entitled rules of order. We're oh, yes, that's you know, correct. We, we, yeah. we have multiple policies. So yeah. I was wondering if we were okay, well, I'll, I'll move to uh, approve um, the policy entitled rules of, rules of order as stated in entitlement A. Is there a second? second? second. Okay. Um, can we make that to um, amend the policy entitled? Friendly, yes, my bad. Okay. Uh, any public comment? Any oh, more? Arguably, actually, comment? the public comment that uh, I received yesterday is about this new wording. He intended to be about this new wording, but it's actually about the the other wording. It's about this sentence that we're that we're amending, but it is about something that was already in the sentence before. Do you want it now or during public comment? Let's um let's do it during public comment. Okay. Yes, thank you. Discussion? Yeah. Um so the only thing I the only reassurance I need is that when it comes back that that the policy committee can assure us all that that this that we haven't broadened the FPPC conflict either intentionally or unintentionally somehow broadened it so that this policy um, is different from the FPPCs because that's going to lead to a lot of confusion. Yeah. So if you, if, if you can just give that assurance and then I'll call for the question. Awesome. That sounds good. And then just question since that's now the new policy. Right? Yes. And I'll just remind that uh, we're voting to yeah. amend the policy entitled Rules of Order to read as stated in Attachment A. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? So ordered. So um, that's six zero with uh, Director Jordan absent. Okay. And I don't know. Do, do we need a motion to move the to, to reconsider the conflict of interest policies? I think we can just ask the chair to put it on the agenda. I'm happy to put it on the agenda. Thank you. All right. Uh, any other discussion in this two point one? Okay. With that, we're moving on to public comment period. At this time, any member of the public may speak on matters within the subject jurisdiction of the board of directors that are not on the agenda. The board will not take any 
will not take action on any item on the agenda except as provided by law. Um, anyone wishes, wishing to speak, please, if you're able to come up to this uh, podium, and uh, you can speak for up to four minutes. So I'm reading a letter that was provided by Siddhartha Himsanda, uh, which is how he would like to initially be called, but he will also say that he's also known as Jeff Bart, founder of Resistance Press Association, formerly known as Resistance Cafe. Re, notice of objection to document dated April 24th, 2017, is entitled IVCSD Policy Manual Permanent Draft, which includes rules of order for board meetings, and at five states that, the president may eject any person or persons making slanderous remarks or da, 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 refusing to abide by the request from the president. Editorial note, we just removed slanderous or and modified it to something, but the rest of the sentence stands. To wit, this item violates the California Constitution Article 1 in that it presents a chilling effect abrogating free of freedom of speech. It should be amended to qualify a request from the president as necessary or appropriate order request. Decorum at public meetings is currently the subject of high-profile litigation in the federal courts as the current attorney general who took office through illicit criminal intervention by a foreign power. He also made false statements and apparently cannot commit perjury at his confirmation hearing. His discredited office is now spearheading an assault on journalists, activists, residents, and citizens, a paramount aspect of which is to enact essentially a gag order on public participation. Isla Vista prides itself on independence, and the language of the IVSC policy manual does not reflect the spirit of the community and should be amended. Moreover, the undersigned takes exception to the process of adoption, which did not include proper prior notice and did not, as recalled, open for public comment after formulation of the motion. Indeed, there were also no public copies on the table when the undersigned entered the meeting. Sincerely, Siddhanta Hamansananda. Uh, and uh, I spoke with this person yesterday, and uh, he will uh, further clarify that um, uh, in the final sentence, its final paragraph about uh, noticing um, involves uh, pr uh, first and second readings of policies, um, which you sometimes will see occurring at the Board of Supervisors. And I'm just reading this statement and telling you what he told me. I am not telling you that this is my statement or anything like that. Thank you so much. Um, is there anyone else who would like to speak during the public, public comment period? Okay. Seeing none, we are going to move to discussion and action items. Um, to start off, we have num number uh, 4.1, acknowledge the events of May 23rd, 2014. The Board of Directors will discuss and acknowledge the upcoming anniversary of the 2014 Isla Vista tragedy, the legacy of the victims, and the re resiliency of the Isla Vista community in the aftermath of tragedy. Um, I guess I'll start with this. Um, this year we're going to have another uh, anniversary of this horrific incident that will forever be a part of our community's history, that will forever be a part of what's, what Isla Vista is and what it has been. Um, and we can never forget the victims who, who passed in this attack, all those who have been affected, um, the families of the victims, the neighbors, the classmates, the professors. Um, this is something that shook our community to its core, something that many of us who have arrived afterwards cannot even begin to understand, but something that, even though we can't understand that, I think we are so impassioned in the work that we do, so impassioned to make this a safer community, so impassioned to prevent things like this from happening again. Um, there's not a day that goes by uh, in this position that I don't think about what's happened here. There's not a day that goes by since I've lived in Isla Vista that I haven't thought about this. And, um, and it's, it's awful that that is a memory for us, but um, it's amazing that as a community we've stayed so strong. It's amazing that as a community we've formed this self-governing body, um, and it's amazing as a community to see the great days that are ahead. Uh, would anyone else uh, like to make a statement? Director Hedges. Um, the morning after, um, when I was interviewed by a, an NPR reporter, I was asked um, whether this brought up memories of the, the 23 February 2001 incident uh, in which four were killed um, on those same streets. Uh, and um, the, the one who survived that attack uh, passed away just a few weeks ago. Um, 
uh, after uh, uh, struggles with the injuries that he received that night. Um, my response to when I was asked whether uh, 23 May uh, 2014 brought up those memories, I said, no, they're always with me. And um, not only, you know, it's, it's, it's another one that has been added to a lot of memories that we have in Isla Vista, from which, uh, to steal Abraham Lincoln's phrase, as I'm fond of doing from time to time, um, from, from these deaths we take increased devotion. And um, uh, in many ways, uh, those deaths uh, drove us to this day, drove us to the election, uh, drove us to sitting here at this table, and um, we should not forget them because they are in many ways what brought us to this place, and we must, uh, we must do better, <coughs> and um, we will do better, and um, the more committed we are uh, to holding those memories, and that's not morbid or anything, that's actually, uh, it's just part of the life that we've been given in this place, uh, we will not forget. Director Freeman. In many ways, uh, this incident is the reason why I got into politics. Um, I was on Pardal Road that in, like, for four hours that day, and it was only because I'm on a weird nocturnal schedule that I and my friend, both computer people, went home in order to take a nap in the, like, in the middle of the day. And less than an hour later is when the shooting occurred right there on Pardal. Um, the, um, I then went to a meeting of the Public Safety Committee uh, in order to talk with other people about what had ended up occurring uh, and get dragged into a long conversation then with uh, um, Cameron Schunk and um, uh, Josh Plotke, which then turned into a meeting of students for Safe Rila Vista, which then caused me to get involved in meetings that occurred with Jonathan Abood and Cameron and uh, at the uh, food co-op and this kind of things kept s s snowballing until now here I am on a board of a special district looking at public safety issues here in Isla Vista. Um, I uh, ended up getting involved in the, um, so when Kim Yasuda, professor of art, um, started working uh, on uh, an activity called Blue Night, um, which was uh, a memorial uh, here in Isla Vista. And, and that's just, so something I just wanted to kind of bring up then related to this, which um, uh, so Father John had just stated here about remembering uh, and the, uh, and the students were actually told um, that they should maybe skip the memorial this year um, by some of the people in the university. And I just, um, that did, did not work for me. Um, but I, um, yeah, so this is, this is something that is, uh, well, uh, so I, 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 I honestly did not, I did not know the people. Um, but one of my very close colleagues, uh, uh, lecturer Phil Conrad, um, who's uh, there are other students in the audience today. Um, four of the people were students of his, uh, and so just oftentimes uh, interfacing with with Phil on this is just it's it's very yeah. And well, that's all I have to say. Well, I I can say from my personal experience, um, this was before my time. I was a junior in high school. Um, I still remember finding out about the tragedy. Um, I found out about it in a very millennial fashion. I was scrolling through my Twitter timeline and I soon figured out that the timeline was filled with this hashtag, yes all women. Um, and I did some digging to try to figure out what it was about. Um, and just finding out the reason, the, the impetus for this hashtag was just shocking and gross to read. Um, I think that like first impression still kind of uh, colors the way that I think about this issue um, because in a lot of ways, I don't know, for me it, it, it's difficult to, to, to separate both the, the tragedy and, of the events and just the horrific nature uh, that uh, the horrific thing that brought someone to that point to do that. Um, yeah, I've like I think everyone sitting up here, we've all heard stories of people who were here, people who were close to it, uh, people who were, clo who were close to those who have passed, um, and 
while it doesn't touch me on that same personal level that I think it touches uh, a lot of you, both in the room uh, and sitting up here on the board, and it it really is something that um, it, it means a, a lot to me. Um, I think speaking for my generation of students, um, second year students, uh, first year students, even the third years now, in a lot of cases, um, they they weren't here for these events. Um, and in a lot of ways, they, they haven't seen what it's like when Pandora's box really opens yeah. uh, in that sort of an instant, just like that. Yeah. Um, I take it upon myself, and I think it should be upon all of us to remember, um, to remind people that um, you know things can go very bad uh, in just a, in, in an instant like that. Um, it's us, up to us to remember why we're here um, in a lot of ways. The, these events, the horrific events of that entire year, are why we're here. Um, and uh, you know, I, I really think it's our duty to continue to further public safety for that reason. Um, I really think that um, the six would want that, um, and uh, I feel that it's good to read their names too. Um, Katie, Veronica, George, James, David, and Christopher in their memory. Would any members of the public like to comment, make a statement, share what's on your on your mind? Uh, Jeremy and then Jonathan. My name is uh, Jeremy Rourke. I'm a, a psychologist. Uh, I was actually working at UCSB at the time of the tragedy, and. Um, learned of it about, I believe it was 6 a.m. the next morning. Um, we were called in to respond. Um, I'm now currently a psychologist in, in, in Goleta, in private practice, um, but my, my heart remains um, very tied to uh, what happened and to Isla Vista. And um, I hope that this board will um, keep in mind um, the need, the needs of this community as, as you serve the community, um, as illustrated by both the 2011 and um, up 2001 and uh, 2014. Uh, incidents. Um, there are many, um, well the community center will be a great addition to Isla Vista, um, but you spoke of uh, both public safety and uh, mental health issues. Those are also needs highlighted by many community members in the, in the wake of the tragedy. Um, I imagine in the wake of both tragedies. Um, so while there are many um, Nonprofit counseling centers in um, Santa Barbara City. Um, there, are, there are none. Historically, there has been in this building, in fact, uh, a nonprofit counseling center available to all members of the community. Um, but there are none currently. Um, it's my hope that this board will consider support of such a uh, counseling facility. Uh, regardless of uh, who that might involve. Um, and uh, of course, continue the fight on working on appropriate public safety issues. Thank you. Jonathan. I'll just keep it brief. I talked about this at the inaugural meeting, but uh, I'm really appreciative of the board for taking action on this. You know, this was uh, three years ago, so like May 17, 2014. No one thought we'd be here today. So this event changed Isla Vista permanently, I think, and affected a lot of people who've lived here, people who did it did at the time and do now and did before. So, you know, me personally, like I bet on that night, I remember just all the phone calls and. No, no one had no any idea what was going on. And it was chaotic here. 
Uh, but I'm glad. I mean, it's it's incredible where we've come since then. It's night and day different. It's not the same Isla Vista, uh, and how things are handled here, how people view IV. Like we, the community really did a good job of responding and coming together. So, thank you for memorializing this as a CSD, because as we all said, this board exists almost directly from that event. So, thank you, Darcel. So for those of you who don't know me, um, I'm Darcel Elliott. I work for Doss Williams, and I, led, I facilitated the EB3 meetings that led to the CSD. Um, and so I've worked with students in Alabama so <coughs> ever since I graduated, which was eight years ago. Um, but um, 2014 was the was the worst year for me to be a mentor to UCSB students, just in terms of the stress on me of the amount of times I had to call students that I was working with and ask them if they were okay, you know, during the riot or sexual assaults that were happening or um, what, what have you. Um, and I remember on May 23rd, um, one of my the students that I worked with called me to tell me there was a drive-by shooting, and I had no idea the gravity of the situation, obviously. And it was actually, I think, like the third time that I had gotten a text or something about gunshots happening in IV, like in that month. So it didn't seem even that bizarre to me, um, which is really unsettling, just the fact that we were in that situation. And during the AB3 process, um, which was just one of the many actions that were taken in the wake of 2014, um, we talk, DOS talked a lot about the cycle of neglect, that so much of the story of Isla Vista is a story of tragedy happening, the greater community responding, putting resources into Isla Vista, Isla Vista stabilizing, and then people forgetting what happened. And this year is the um, last year that students who actually attended at um, UCSB, when the shooting happened, will, will be graduating this year, so already the memory will start to fade. Um, which for those of us who were here, it's, you know, we'll never forget, but it's up to us to you know, keep that memory alive and keep working towards um, making sure that you know, nothing like that ever has to happen again to get people to care about Isla Vista. And the CSD is kind of that stop of that cycle that we don't need the greater community to pay attention anymore. We can stabilize ourselves. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment? Ash? Yeah. Um, so I'm one of those seniors that Marcel was talking about. I was a freshman when this happened. Um, I was actually in Embarcadero Hall when it happened at an improbability show that ran late. If it had let out on time, I would have been standing right there in those bike racks. I don't know when you drift by, but um, that's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> um, but yeah, so especially because uh, all the people who are who had that as part of their freshman experience are, are uh, hopefully graduating this year. Um, I really hope that the community can come together for a memorial um, event or experience together. And um, you know, I'll admit that I haven't actually been keeping tabs on that until I heard what Jay said about how um, the school perhaps is uh, not going to be being proactive on that, which I find just really just appalling. Um, they could wait until next year, <laughs> where uh, you know at least all the freshmen at the time that, who are graduating on time would be gone, but. But just to stop that tradition this year uh, seems pretty cool. It's cruel to my graduating class. So um, uh, if that's not going to happen, I think that like we as the Elvis community should come together to make something like that happen. But I, I actually don't know what's happening. So if any of you do, uh, please let me know. Yeah. I, oh, actually, I do know. I just wanted to announce the candlelight vigil uh, will be held on May 23rd uh, from 7 to 9 p.m. in Anascoyo Park. Um, I'm not quite sure who's organizing it. Uh, the event is I Love This Strong. Um, so, any other uh, public comment? No. Thank you so much for all who spoke. Thank you, uh, Jay. I just, I just want to be very clear that the um, um, so the Blue Knight was originally constructed as a project in the course that um, this topic. Professor Yasuda, and then the, it has since disconnected. And but they came back to our class in order to, a few weeks ago in order to give a report and to ask for volunteers. And during that report, we were told that the university had asked them this year to not do it. They didn't listen, so they did it. It's not that the university didn't demand; the university simply requested. 
Well, since we've commented on it, I don't know who the university is. It's fair. Mm -hmm. nor, nor do I, have I heard anybody at the university attempt to downplay this, and in fact, the, uni the university, Student Affairs, is deeply involved in mm -hmm. commemoration and activities. So uh, I think it's unfortunate that we're talking about the university doing something which uh, I am not f at all familiar with. Mm -hmm. I'll even apologize for blanketing a large organization with a comment that was probably attributed towards a small handful of people. Director Hedges? Um, I, I would just hope that uh, somehow or another in the future we, um, uh, we have Dia de los Muertos. Um, you know, in a sense, this is our Dia. Uh, th this is this could be that day where we as a community uh, take a tragedy and um, bundle together our grief and turn it into something better. And perhaps this may be the year we do that. All right. Well, as board president, I move to formally recognize and acknowledge the upcoming anniversary of the 2014 Isla Vista tragedy, the legacy of the victims and the resiliency of the Isla Vista community in the aftermath of tragedy. I second that. Any board discussion? Any public comment? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? So ordered, 6-0, with Director Jordan absent. All right, so now we're going to continue Jay. So uh, I, we might, in fact, also have representatives here from the Rape Crisis Center. I think some people are here in order to speak on public comment on the item 4.7. I know a lot of the items in between are more procedural oriented with, with respect to how we construct and operate our district. Um, I, um, I would thereby ask that we maybe move item 4.7 up earlier. Absolutely. Um, and I'm actually going to take another one out of order as well. So we'll do 4.7. Um, and then after that, we'll do 4.9. Uh, we're, we have uh, our third district supervisor here tonight uh, for that item especially. Um, and then after that, we'll carry on in the regular order of business. Um, but first, item 4.7, discuss the power to contract for additional police protection services and community engagement for service development. At the May 11th special meeting, uh, I gave a presentation on my meeting with uh, the Chancellor's Coordinating commit Committee on Isla Vista. Um, not the whole committee, but uh, the leaders of it. Um, and in that discussion, we spoke about contracting for additional police protection services, um, especially the idea of um, contracting to fund a sexual assault in uh, investigator for Isla Vista, uh, and then also briefly about the possibility of expanding the community service officer program. Um, at the May 11th special meeting, uh, we decided to bring this back onto this agenda um, to talk about putting together a public safety town hall, um, a with the idea that it would be a way for us to engage with the larger community um, at this crucial time where we are beginning our discussions with the university to move forward on providing a service that this very, very much may end up being. Um, so with that, um, are there members of the board who would like to, to comment on anything in particular related to um, planning an event? Um, Director Prima. So, um, the provide some some what's the word for context? Um, yes. Yeah, so there was um, uh, we begin our discussion to the university now on what the money that they pledged us pledged to us will be used for. And so Ethan has provided an attachment with the um, short list of items, uh, and he has on there a the sexual assault detective, um, which was something that I actually had a kind of question about. Is that something that the um, CCCIV came up with, or is that something that the CCCIV came up with, um, or the UCPD came up with and brought to CCCIV? Or I believe it was that, that one. Uh, okay. The UCPD came up with it and brought it to the committee. Okay. Um, so I was at the um, uh, the Title IX sit-in for uh, so a few of the hours at the, the end of it, from about like one thirty in the morning until 4 in the morning when the Chancellor assigned the set of demands. Um, I had an opportunity now to speak with uh, Alejandra, who was the person who brought these demands for, uh, forward a couple years ago. Um, I've spoken with um, Paola, who was the person who did the facilitation at this pre prior meeting. Um, I have uh, uh, had an opportunity to talk with somebody from the uh, Rape Crisis Center, um, who was uh, actually in Isla Vista. They were sponsoring the Juggling Festival. 
on this last weekend um, and about about the, uh, the the wording of this and things that we should be we should be thinking that are to take careful on this and and one of the things is um, well so we should make certain that everyone is involved and so that then came we, there was a special meeting of the um, of our district where we had presented this information from the um, uh, from the CCCIV uh, and then I, I brought the idea of having a town hall um, the construction then of the agenda item that we have today uh, and the way that the discussion had started going during that special meeting kind of glanced more towards a uh, moved more towards a general public safety town hall um, but I've now um, been talking with, the, with talking with these people about um, uh, is that the right approach um, and so I also it was one more meeting I had um, I um, was uh, uh, on the agenda of the um, uh, student activist networks core um, committee or something or other, I've forgotten the term uh, for it, uh, last night, uh, and asking everybody for feedback on, uh, on the stru structure of such a town hall. And uh, one of the concerns is, is that if you have a very general town hall, that you end up with a situation where people don't necessarily have space to talk about the, the in-depth in -de in complex issues that they have. Um, you also can end up in situations where um, the entire meeting ends up getting spent towards maybe working on um, the way that uh, community policing interfaces with party as opposed to working on um, how you have uh, like the sexual violence in the area. Um, I've, so all, all the people I've talked to with one minor exception, um, which I will bring up in a second, um, have leaned towards having a specific meeting about sexual violence. And then we could, for example, have separate town halls maybe for um, Black Lives Matter is another example of, of an issue that we could try to focus on or um, looking at a um, um, I, my brain's blanking right now. I'm terribly sorry about that. Um, it's, it's interesting. It's having, having the public safety conversation immediately after the incredibly deep conversation about the, the memorial events is probably not the greatest agenda mm -hmm. item choice, but I, there's a re of course, the people, you know, there's a reason I wanted to waste it. <laughs> um, the, um, yeah, so uh, uh, Alejandra, uh, however, did bring up one possible issue, which is that if you have a, a meeting that is entirely um, uh, focused on sexual violence, then you can run into an issue where maybe men's rights activists are now driven to come to the meeting and derail the meeting. Um, but then the discussion I had at the Student Activist Network yesterday, people thought that well, we could deal with that. Like, we, 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 can, we can structure the meeting and set everything up in a way where that is unlikely to happen. And even Alejandra still wanted to see, though, um, specific uh, agenda points um, so that uh, it, as opposed to uh, it, an initial very very general town hall um, there's a lot of there's a lot of like details even among for example the specific idea of a sexual assault um, detective uh, that we might want to be able to discuss um, whether it comes from the UCPD or whether it comes from the sheriff's department what the hiring process would end up coming along um, how the um, person would interface and, uh, internally um, with uh, um, what, how the jurisdictions would. There are all sorts of like, complex, complex, complexity there, and having all of that um, in place and where we can talk about that during that town hall to me seems important. Cool. And I'm just going to make a quick comment, and I'll give you Director Brandt. But um, I, uh, I definitely appreciate all of your thoughts on uh, the different different topics that may come up in the town hall and whether they should be multiple events. Um, I, I just want to share with the board uh, some of the notes I've prepared in, in where this event could go. Um, first of all, I think the reason for this event, um, the biggest reason is for this board, in our previous discussions, we've all come to um, kind of an unofficial agreement that public safety is a top priority of ours and that it's something that we want to contract for. Um, and what, what I saw this event being so important to do is um, to outreach to a lot of the members of the community who might not necessarily uh, be those who come to our board meetings, might not necessarily be the ones in the same circles as us, um, an opportunity to really reach out to the community. And with that, um, a few of the things that I see as important for it would be um, a, to focus on informing people of our power to contract for additional police protection services and what we can do with that power. So set, um, kind of paint a picture of what we can do to fix the issue, um, just so that it's clear um, what our board can do. Because there's a lot of things that need to be fixed in our vista, um, but we should come into it with uh, just the understanding of what our board's uh, role in this is. Um, and then after that, uh, speak about the most pressing public safety issues. and. Um, allow people to voice their public safety concerns and make recommendations on action that we may want to take. Um, so with that, we would want to present on some of the um, 
potential ideas that we have um, and receive community feedback on those ideas, but then also hear if there are other ideas, which I'm sure there will be many. Um, and then also while potential action and while this whole um, discussion I think should be framed on the IVCSD's service, um, we should also request representatives from the Sheriff's Office, UCPD, um, the District Attorney's Office, and the Third District Supervisor's Office. That way so we have a big coalition of stakeholders in this and even though um, we're discussing specifically um, the Isla Vista Community Services District's role, um, there will be all the partnering stakeholders uh, should there be other things that come up. Um, and I think it's important that we move quickly on this um, to make sure that it doesn't take place during finals week um, and that it takes place before a lot of students uh, go away. Um, and uh, yeah, that was kind of just some of my ideas, but Director Brent? Yeah, no, I, I really want to echo back to it. I think that I think that those are some really good ideas. Um, I really like what you said about focusing people's priorities and expectations. Um, because I know that's something that I think there's a lot of just confusion about what it is that we are as a CSD, like let alone people even knowing what a community services district is. Um, that's not something that your average student is going to have the wherewithal or the experience to know. Um, and um, I think one of the ways that I really started to understand that was when um, I was at the uh, sit-in um, at the university for uh, sexual assault uh, process reform um, and uh, I saw the district's name come up on their list of demands um, regarding um, the, the proposal was for us to create a report card by which we ranked other agencies that were service providers in Isla Vista about how well uh, they were doing in terms of um, uh, going through the process with victims. Um, and my initial thought on that was, um, that sounds like a really cool project, but it's not one of our eight services. Mm -hmm. And the reason that we are chartered as a district is to provide those services. Um, obviously, we want to be a place that can provide space for those conversations as well. But um, I was hearing that and thinking, um, you know, given our <laughs> limited resources and uh, time, um, that would be something that. If, you know, if, if we'd have to put it on the back burner, if we, you know, sat on something like that. Um, so I've actually talked to folks and associated students who are interested in, in doing something like that. Um, and uh, hopefully there'll be something that comes about in that realm. But um, I really want to voice my support for uh, a town hall that is broad and that is very public safety oriented in a holistic manner. Um, I think one of the ideas that we talked about briefly at the special meeting was uh, having some sort of a format where directors can prepare presentations about their ideas for how the police protection power or any of the other powers really um, can be used, any of them that pertain to public safety, that is. Um, because I think that, especially within police protection, there are a million different ideas that we all have. There are probably a million different ideas that folks in the public have. Um, and it would be really great, I think, for us to create a space where we can really, um, like, hone in on um, some specific big picture ideas uh, and see what the community supports. Uh, because this would be our first kind of town hall-ish sort of event. Um, I'm The way that I'm envisioning it at least is that it would be um, a lot more, you know, it wouldn't be all former, formal, like I'm not going to wear a tie, I promise. Um, and we, you know, there won't be like the board, it'll just be a lot more of uh, us having a conversation um, and some presentations about uh, what the district is, what our authority is, what our accomplishments this far are, the history, as we've touched on a lot tonight. Um, and I think that, um, like, in that context, um, it would be really good for uh, us to be able to, uh, like, hear what people want um, and what people are interested in. Um, because I think that from the way that I see it, there are a lot of different things that we can do within the public safety uh, for contracting for additional police powers. Um, and there are so many ideas that I thought, like, we should do that, or we should do that, or we should do that. But I think we should really, like, try to figure out what the people really want. Um, and so I think that the idea of, like, having directors come and doing presentations is a really good one, and that we should uh, try to focus our events something in like that. Any comments over here? Are you going to present you? Um, 
The only, the only comment I had on, on the initial proposal just from the university to say we want an investigative officer, I think I was thinking about that and say, well, it's not just the investigation of the crimes that we want to go solve, but it's also, you know, talking to other people, we really want to get into education and prevention mm -hmm. on the front end so that you aren't solving them on the back end. So, you know, when I, when I was talking to some other people about, you know, well, what kind of person are we looking for, you know? If you're talking to the DA, they, they're going to have an interest to look for somebody, or the sheriff might have a, a different way to look at this. And the university, you know, there are a lot of their students, so they have a different way to look at this. And so I think we need to bring those interests together, and, you know, I think there is a need for someone out there to do that education, the prevention, and the investigation and understand the laws and the victims and the you know you know and and really bring a whole package together and it probably is a full-time job for somebody to do that in this community day in and day out and so i think there's a they, they've looked for that need so um and so that that i just think it's it's it, that position i i, I think it's a good uh, opening point by the university to say we think this is one of those high priority needs. I, don't, I think we should go look at the community and say, well, does the community agree with the university? And I think that's why the university is suggesting it, because they are hearing from the community that that's a high priority need. So I, I just would be supportive. George? Um, just two quick points. One is, um, uh, Ethan, as you know, because you're on that committee, the the district attorney's task force has uh, assigned a subgroup that's going to make it a priority to look at sexual assaults in Isla Vista. Mm -hmm. And so I just want to make sure that whatever we do, we're in total coordination with that. Otherwise, we're going to be totally duplicating our efforts and working at cross purposes. So I, I, I also agree it would be good to have this before um, a lot of our constituents are gone. Um, uh, you know, so I support the idea of a town hall. I also want to just add some context about the, the um, sexual assault detective. That really was an idea that was just sort of tossed out, and it's an interesting idea, but I think as, as our foot patrol representative would tell us, the cost of a detective would be probably, with benefits, about $200,000. So that would pretty much take the whole thing. So. Um, I don't think anybody is talking about uh, the district funding a detective. Uh, I think what what uh, what came, what the one liner that was thrown out was, isn't this an interesting idea where we could actually work with the district to provide greater security? Um, and nobody has really talked too much about how that would work, but I would just tell you that the cost of it would be something like 150000 to 200000 because of benefits. Mm -hmm. It's about $178,000. Yeah, 178000 Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, I, and I think that uh, some of like that information is like the kind of things that we could really get distilled into like these presentations about different public safety ideas. Um, I know I have my own ideas about what I would want to present on. Um, I know um, that Ethan would probably have his ideas. I mean, like, we all would have mm -hmm. these ideas. Um, and we should really, like, kind of put them out there um, because that was kind of my feeling, too, when I first heard about the sexual assault detective mm -hmm. idea because I think I'd heard something similar bounced around in the past and, that I, you know, I, I don't think that like I don't want the impression from anyone that we're like focused in on that or anything mm -hmm. really because this is really I mean that's the reason that we want to have this town hall is to try to gauge the community's priorities um, I also want to say briefly uh, on a little bit of a subtopic but in terms of logistics for a meeting like this um, I've contacted um, Rodney Gould at IVRPD um, in terms of wondering if we could schedule this room for something like that um, some sort of a town hall um, and I think the date that looked to me like the best was May 30th um, and May 30th is uh, that would be Memorial Day weekend. that would be uh, no it'd be, it'd be on a Tuesday um, Memorial Day would be on the Monday um, and one of the so that would be two weeks from now 
um, but we don't have a meeting scheduled then because our, our our regular meetings are just first and third <coughs> Tuesdays of each month. Um, so keep that in mind too. Is that um, I think it's a like you said, we really got to get this done pretty quickly to make sure that people can still like be there and want to come to the event. Um, and I mean, I would certainly be prepared to really go all out and make sure we can get as many people in the room as possible. I know that, I mean, just from listening to what people have had to say, like there is a lot of interest in anything that we do that's public safety related mm -hmm. right now. Director Hedges? Um, where I come from on this, um, uh, I, I, I know that detectives love to, to clear cases. Okay, that's what they want to do. They want to target a case. There's something egregious that happens in the community. They they want to they want to clear it. But as much as anything that we want here, we don't just want to clear a case or two every once in a while. We want to change a culture. And um, I, I I would just love to have that somehow inserted into any town hall that this isn't just about clearing a case or two when one comes along. This is about changing a culture so that we don't have so bloody many cases. And if we had that kind of a town hall, uh, we might really come up with some ideas. Absolutely. I don't know if I can ask a question. Please. The town hall is to just gather uh, information from uh, our people out here and ideas so we can bring to the meeting that we're going to be convening. So it's um, it'll definitely that'll be part of it. Um, yeah. The the main reason we've initiated this is so that we can get direction for um, our funding with the university. That's the main part. But like George was saying, it's important that those are tied together. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And that's why I would want to invite sheriff's office and the district attorney and the supervisor. Um, yeah. Uh, sure. Yes. We'll come back to the board. I have something I really wanted to say about this. Um, so, yeah, certainly in Isla Vista we have, like, uh, we have broad public safety concerns and we also have a lot of public safety concerns that um, affect really specific groups of people. Um, and, uh, you know, a lot of those are uh, really, really um, have come to a lot of light um, recently this year. And so uh, we can't afford to ignore any of them and I think every single community deserves to have those problems addressed. Um, However, you know, I know uh, that many of you actually attended the um, <coughs> sit-in that we had um, last, not last week, two weeks ago now, um, on that Wednesday night. Um, and I want to remind you that, you know, even though that, that was for one very specific topic, um, it lasted, I think, about eight or ten hours. Uh, I know I got there at 10 p.m. and I didn't leave until about five in the morning. And when I got there, it was in full swing already, and uh, apparently they were working until at least 6 a.m. after I left. Um, and that was uh, really to, to address a very like narrow set of issues. You know, it takes that much time uh, when you have uh, like a specific community um, who's come together and like, a, you know, there's going to be a lot of individuals who are going to want to share their personal stories um, with, um, with our agency representatives and our, our agencies who have the power to actually do something about this um, and I think we need to give all, like, all of those individuals space to share their stories and share like what they think needs to be done um, and so for that reason while I do think that actually like a broad public safety town hall um, I think that's a great idea but I think that we also need to have specific um, like sub community like specific topic town halls because otherwise we won't get anything done even if we want to meet for six or eight hours that's barely enough time to address the concerns of one very specific community. Um, and so if we were to have a general one, I think that would need to be a follow-up to several specific ones. Um, and even then, you know, each of these events is going to take uh, a lot of time, like a whole, <laughs> an entire afternoon and, uh, and or evening. Um, and so I, I don't think that, that the preliminary event should be something general because I, I can't see any useful conclusions coming out of that besides perhaps a list of future town calls that we need to have. Um, yeah, so I think that's all I need. Thank you. Uh, any more public comment, please feel free to come up. So just to throw another um, potential format into the mix. 
Um, I, I think there's merit to all of the previously stated ideas. Um, but I'm wondering about perhaps a general uh, general meeting to start, but within the general meeting, perhaps break out sessions into specific topics um, so that all of those specific topics can be addressed too. Just another, just another idea. I'm sure um, the... I like it. <laughs> can I respond to that? So a lot of these... Can That's I it. Sure, that was it? Okay. Yeah. Um, so a lot of these specific communities have already come together to... Um, to discuss these things in, in like smaller groups um, and so you know if we have like a broad town hall then for example specifically um, you know the, the sexual assault group is going to meet together and they've actually met together already twice mm -hmm. um, and while it we're meeting in these like separate caucuses or, or what have you you know those separate groups of people are not going to they're going to be talking to each other but they're not going to have the attention of the sheriff or the representatives of uh, whatever various local agencies that they actually want to have a conversation with, um, like that conversation isn't going to be facilitated in breakup in breakout groups because at best you're going to have those representatives going from one group to another with something only like five or ten minutes with each, and that's just um, I don't think that's going to be enough time to get much done on any, any specific issue. Any other public comment before we come back to the board? Um, very briefly. Um, I think so. Are you speaking as a member of the public or as an intern? That's like the third time. Um, yeah, like on the mm -hmm. town hall. Um, so specificity, I, I feel like, of course, needs to be stressed because I don't want it to get bogged down by students, but at the same time, like students do make up like a, a very large portion uh, of the population that needs to be addressed because they, they are unfortunately like uh, uh, the main victims of it. But as well as um, I've already sent an email to the principal of the Ivy Elementary School uh, because uh, for this, I, uh, we obviously need to reach out to different members of the community, um, specifically like the Hispanic population as well. So I, I tried emailing the Ivy uh, Elementary School principal to, to reach out and uh, somehow initiate contact to members of the public for, for this town hall, um, as well as the location. Um, do, you, do you have an idea as to where the location would be right now? Uh, Director Brown. Yeah, yes, uh, in this room. In this room? Yes. So we had spoken a little bit about Barthel Hall, which requires a fee to rent it while this room is free. And so given our limited resources, okay. I, unless we have another space that's comparable, this yeah. seems like the place. So I see. So I've also speaking, spoken to Father Love uh, at, at St. Mark's uh, Church. He's, uh, yeah, when I brought up the idea of a, of a public safety town hall or one, committed to such ideas. Uh, he, he was actually excited, he was thrilled that, that such a thing was, was uh, happening. Um, he did, uh, in, a, in an aside, mention that his, the church had also held town halls. Um, so one, given the fact that town halls have, have been held in St. Mark's. Two, given his enthusiasm for such a town hall, um, I think that if, if need be for a bigger venue, um, we could reach out to, to potentially him, um, uh, maybe even um, if all goes well, the Ivy Elementary School, perhaps using an auditorium over there um, to facilitate a larger audience. Um, yeah, that's it. But no, no matter what, like I think it's a great idea. Uh, but it should be, it should get done soon since we are in the term is spring week seven already. Um, things are getting going really, really fast for students as of right now. Um, so that's really it. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, good afternoon everyone. My name is Adalia Gomez and I'm here from Santa Barbara Rape Crisis Center. And just wanted um, to mention a couple of points um, regarding the meeting. Um, absolutely agree that it's important to uh, engage other members of the community. Um, through Santa Barbara Rape Crisis Center, over the last couple of years, we've uh, increased our efforts to provide rape prevention education and awareness to members of the community that are not connected to the university because we know oftentimes they don't um, get the same resources. So we've definitely um, increased our efforts to, to bring awareness um, to those sections of the community. So I think um, a larger um, uh, room might be a, a great idea since you might be expecting uh, quite a few people. Um, I liked um, that it was mentioned uh, regarding sexual assault, that we need to see a change in the culture, and I think that's one of the primary efforts that we would like to see happen through the Rape Crisis Center. Oftentimes, um, funding uh, is 
it, it sent towards intervention after an incident happens. So most of the funding that we get is to work with sexual assault survivors, which is extremely important, uh, but oftentimes the prevention and changing that culture gets set aside. Um, so I do want to um, argue with the importance of bringing that education. We've had a couple public events here in Isla Vista to do that, and we hope to continue to bring them here in the community. Um, the other um, item regarding the meeting I wanted to mention, Ethan and I have attended that uh, IV uh, safe meetings at the DAs, and I know the first meeting we had where sexual assault was brought up, we did have to cut the conversation short, and it did have to get moved to an entirely separate meeting. So just keep that in mind because we have seen it happen in other meetings that the discussion just it is, it goes very much um, in, in depth and a lot of issues arise. Um, so be prepared to possibly host a separate meeting outside of the general one to focus on the sexual assault issues. Uh, regarding the investigator, I know that Elsa um, and Mr. Freeman spoke uh, recently and we fully support that. If any of you have any questions about how we work with survivors of sexual assault and um, um, I love this, the Foot Patrol can share some of that. It's, it's a lot of work that they put into it, and it's something that I, I think would be important, um, and uh, we can have conversations about the impact that that has <coughs> on law enforcement and the benefits that it would have for sexual assault survivors. Uh, so I'm here. If anyone has any questions, uh, reach out. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. Jonathan. Uh, the Isle of Vista self governance Initiative will help do a lot of outreach for this, whatever ends up being <laughs> Awesome. Thank you. Um, Jeff. Hi, Jeff. Um, I've spoken in the past. I mentioned part of my credentials uh, before I went to law school. I attended John Jay School of Criminal Justice. Uh, I also became very interested in uh, the uh, forensic aspect of international human rights protection. I went down to Guatemala at the height of the Civil War and got involved with the Human Rights Commission, uh, the prosecution uh, that came out of that. I got to meet and hang out with some of the lead attorneys on that. And uh, I'm a big supporter of law enforcement, of certain classes of laws in particular that often aren't enforced, such as hate crime laws. And, um, you know, uh, I've been observing. But I, I was not going to comment, but I didn't want to be conspicuous with my silence, and I have some views and opinions, but I'm actually keeping them to myself, because as I told you previously, I am in the process of transforming my role as a uh, public, my public persona, uh, from being a long-term advocate, where I spoke at the Board of Supervisors for years. You know, I was basically trying to be the left answer to Andy Caldwell, and I was at the board with several several times a month. Uh, and I commented, I got to know Bernie Malikian and the sheriff and Joyce Dudley and uh, David, um, uh, I forgot his last name, the, the, the DDA guy. Saunders. Yeah, and, and my main focus was on areas of common interest with the CEOs and the, uh, uh, the custody deputies and the inmates on preventing influenza tuberculosis, things of that nature, because that background in infectious disease prevention. I made a big initiative on that. So, the re what, what, what I pertain to this agenda item, I want to explain that I am in the process of developing my journalistic background, which I have a long resume I will not bore you with, but I was basically the lead writer for um, Santa Barbara Media, and I worked with um, Isabel Walker, uh, and I was supervised by uh, I went to Little John, and I was trained in New York at the United Nations um, with the press corps there. So I am actually transforming into journalistic role, and I will be working on stories. And California has the California Shield Act, which means that as a reporter, if I'm working on a story and I'm talking to substance abusers or I'm talking to undocumented people, I have a lawful right to maintain the confidentiality of my sources. So I'm explaining my silence. And going forward, uh, I will be working on a piece or more appertaining to the shifting role of law enforcement in the area, era of Jeff <coughs> and Donald Trump. And I'm going to be writing about communities that have come up with guidelines to bring law enforcement 
saying this is how we suggest to proceed vis-a-vis -vis the federal government. But I'm going to go ahead and put that stuff in writing under my uh, bylines that you know and kind of work on that level. So the reason I'm commenting here is to say I'm not actually, I'm going to cut back on my public comment and more just write. Thank you. Okay? So now you know. Thanks so much. Um, any other members of the public like to comment? Okay, back to the board. Uh, Director Brent, you had your hand up. Yeah. Um, I, one of the things I think I wanted to mention is that, um, at least from how I see this event, um, you know, as there have been comments about um, solutions uh, towards uh, a community that does not have as widespread of sexual violence and sexual assault, um, you know, that is a horrific problem that has been with us for all of history, and I don't think that any of us in this room can profess that we're going to solve that in mm -hmm. one meeting. Yeah. Um, it's hard enough to get people in Isla Vista to solve anything at one meeting. Um, so I, you know, I, uh, I really appreciate the, the desire for more space for dialogue uh, and for people to be able to come together and uh, mm -hmm. form that sort of, those bonds of understanding. Um, and I, I, I really like the idea of having uh, subgroups um, because um, one of the things that I think we should keep in mind about this event is that um, something I kind of previously said, which is that there are a whole lot of people out there who don't know what the district is, what we can do, what the duties that we are obligated to do under the law are, um, and um, like how we fit in to the broader picture of improving uh, public safety in Isla Vista. Um, and I think that uh, as much as we want to uh, be able to have conversations about things, we also want to do that and um, you know, let people know that we're a thing, that we exist. Um, I think my, my main concern about having a town hall that's too focused is that I don't want to give the community the impression that we've settled on the answer mm -hmm. and then now we are going and asking them to approve of it. I generally don't like that when I see other governments do that, and I wouldn't want us to be on that same track, which is, I think, kind of one of the reasons why I still favor these presentations um, that directors could bring and uh, explain to the community, um, here's what I think we should do with the public safety power or with the police protection power, um, or, you know, if it's public safety related, you know, maybe it pertains to public works, maybe it pertains to sidewalks and streetlights, maybe someone's really passionate about that. And, uh, wants to bring a presentation to that meeting. Um, so I, I still really think that we should make this as inclusive as possible. And I'll, um, I'll just say that I, I definitely uh, really agree with the, the need to have it um, that clear that we are truly taking this advice into consideration that, and that our decisions haven't been made before hearing from the public. Mm -hmm. But I do also want to be really um, kind of practical about what we need to use this for, and I think I think it's important for us to focus on one service in this, just so that we can get the feedback that we really need on that one service. Um, being that we have designated interest in that service among this board, the university has designated interest in moving forward on some sort of project within the police protection power to be a mutually agreed upon service paid for by them. Um, so. My, uh, my concern and why I think it's so urgent that we focused is just so that we can make it effective to this particular thing. Um, because we all know that we can talk for hours on um, public safety and it, each one of our eight services affects public safety. I, I for one think that we just need to focus on this one thing so that we're not um, biting off too much that we can chew and so that we can leave that room with um, solid direction. Um, and I think that will help not just us make a clear presentation to the community on what we can do, but also empower the community to give us clear direction on what they want. Mm -hmm. I, and my concerns, I think, were a little more along the lines of focusing in on one specific thing that we could possibly do with one specific power, rather than, I, I guess I understand the want to get direction so that we can go back to the university uh, through the ad hoc committee and negotiate with them for some of these things. but. Um, like I said, I don't want people to think we, you know, uh, we, we've all settled on this one thing that we're going to do, and now we're going to go sell it to the community. This really, I want to gauge people's priorities. 
Sure. So um, is there any direction right now that the, the board wants to take? Because we do have a long agenda and need to keep moving. But real quick, Director Freeman, you had your hand up, but then we should try oh, to okay. get well, some direction. I, I, clarification question. You, um, when you say focus, do you mean on public safety or do you mean on sexual violence? I mean on the police protection Police service. protection. I wasn't certain. Like, I, I that think that when, when you heard him say focus, did you think he meant on public safety or on sexual violence? I, uh, I, I, like, I noticed uh, I thought there was well, like, a miscommunication. Well, I can just tell you that's what I Yeah, meant. I know. I, know. Yeah, I was yeah. just like, I, I, I think that you might have thought he was focusing more than he, he was. I think he thought that you no, were I, more No, I was more responding to something um, you had said at the very beginning right. and other yeah. things people yeah. said. Yeah. So uh, my, my, my issue is is that if we, if we have a meeting that has presentation, particularly as described presentations from directors, that actually does become us kind of settling on solutions. And also I think that it takes the oxygen out of the room in respect to actually having a conversation with, I mean, the reason to have a town hall is to get feedback from other people on the, what they think the solutions are. I, I don't necessarily, however, think that if we decide on a problem, um, whereas like if we have, for example, sexual violence as a problem that we've, that we've necessarily over-decided something um, that is in comparison to, for example, yes, if we have a town hall that's entirely about sexual assault detective, maybe that's like, you know, a, you know, focusing on solution, but on sexual violence, that's a problem. What are the possible solutions to that? I think there's a lot of a lot of issues with um, that we can a lot of ways to go about addressing that. Um, and so, um, uh, which see, uh, and so there's comments there about like um, you know, if you're in one meeting, we're not able to have solutions, but we can definitely have we can have progress. Um, and uh, yeah, just, oh, and breakout session. I, I just I have attended so many of these town hall meetings that end up where you got a bunch of breakout sessions. So what ends up happening is the people come with other people that they mm -hmm. already agree with and then they end up broken out with because you, you say like okay everyone is interested in this topic. Well yeah they, those are the people who already agreed in that topic. And they all go over there and they all talk about that topic. And, and then, then there's like a, sometimes there's like a presentations at the end from each of those groups but then it's just like a, it's the same watered down summary that they're able to fit into their three minutes that they get to talk about that issue that a lot of times people already knew. Whereas I to me, the most important part about having such like a town hall like this was to be able to get the, the, the depth of understanding that we need uh, on, on the issue, um, which then leads us to, I mean, I, I appreciate maybe it takes a lot of time to do some of this stuff. Um, I reached out to um, Asha a couple days, or yesterday, a couple days ago, or something like that, about possibly being uh, willing to help do outreach for, get the right people involved in, and set up such a meeting. Um, I received feedback that Diana might be interested in, and luckily this weekend um, she's, she'll become free again because she's spending all of her time doing so. But I haven't had a chance to reach out to her yet. Um, I've, but I've heard really strong feedback that her public, um, her town halls have been some of the best town halls that have existed on a lot of these topics. Um, so I would love to be able to get her input and, and help with some of these things. Um, but I, I just, I'm, I'm just, I'm just really concerned about the idea that we're going to end up the, with, with something where it's like an informational session where we spend a half hour teaching people that the CSD exists and that we have power, and then we have each of us provides the ideas that we've been talking about for a while about different ideas that we have for what to do, and then we have a few breakout sessions, um, and then, and then I just, I just don't think it'd be useful. Thank you, Director Jordan. I think the whole idea of a town hall is that we let everybody else talk. So let's just decide that we're going to have one if. If it gets consumed by one topic or another, let's decide to have another. If it doesn't, let's just go with the most prolific idea that we move with. But I think more to the point is that like it's just more of the idea that it just needs to happen and we need to get it started, less about like the actual organization of it. I think that doing outreach to specific communities is really important. Um, and I know from the group uh, of sexual assault survivors that has been working recently, I know that they've already created a unified mission um, that I'm sure that they'd like to speak on. I'm, I'll reach out to them again. But I think that a lot of times it just comes more to down to organization with outreach than it does with the actual organization of the meeting. So the more is providing that space in that forum and however it chooses to present itself, I think we just need to take it and let it ride because that's what the community is going to want, you know? Director so. Brent. So I, I guess what I would just say is that my impression as to why we wanted to do this in the first place was really to advise the committee that we have negotiating with the university. And I think we're talking about this in sort of mutually exclusive terms, like we can't provide space for people, but also provide them information about us and about what we're trying to do and about where our role is uh, in this thing. Because, um, you know, let's be honest, like we aren't the, we aren't the sexual assault working group and you know we, we have representatives on it and I'm so glad that we do but we're not I don't want to I'd be concerned about duplicating efforts 
if we focused in on one particular issue instead of leaving it broad. And broad in this context is meant to say, like, the police protection power. So I appreciate what you had said, Ethan, about, um, like, wanting to be, I guess, practical about it. Because, I mean, like, let's be honest, like, we could use the help, like, in terms of getting our, uh, like, our name out there as a entity that has decision-making ability and the ability to do these specific things. Um, because, like I said at the beginning, I think that there is a misconception of what exactly the district is. And I think that was based off of the fact that um, we, we talk about uh, self-governance and, you know, I'm a huge fan of self-governance, but at the end of the day, I think that it creates the impression in people's mind that, like, we're responsible for everything that goes on in between the university um, <laughs> and Coal Oil Point. So I, I, I really think that uh, that learning aspect, I think, is really valuable uh, because I have conversations with people all the time who are super interested, um, but they just don't know the specifics. Um, I think characterizing it as just like an informational session really sells it short. Um, I think that like there's a lot of value in explaining to people, hey, hi, we're the Isla Vista Community Services District. Um, we want to help. Here's the things that we can do. Um, and here's the things that we have done. We want your participation. Because one thing that I've really seen, I think, a lack of is that sort of participation. Um, and I think it's because we're just handling boring internal stuff right now. Um, but this, to me, is really the first step into uh, really making a difference. Uh, and I would hate to see us limit ourselves in that difference. Cool. So right now we need um, a motion uh, or some sort of action to schedule this and to direct someone to come up with programming. Do you want to actually make the motion? Because you just Look, you have your hand up. Yeah, I, so okay, I've, I've right. got something. First, I just want to say May 30th, does that work? What day is what day are Tuesday. Do you do that? Oh, Tuesday is your time. What time? Are we 6 p.m. is what I was imagining. Okay. Um, See, so yeah, I'll make a motion. Uh, I move to schedule a special meeting on May 30th at 6 p.m. in a place to be determined um, and to authorize uh, the board president to work with the secretary in coordination with the self-governance initiative to perform targeted outreach promotion and that the board president and the secretary prepare an agenda that includes an item um, for presentations about the district um, and history uh, of the district as well as a period for directors to make presentations and proposals um, as well as uh, a slot for breakout sessions. Um, yeah, that's, it. that's my motion. I know Can that was a second. Lot. Sorry. Okay, there's a second from Jordan. I would ask that we make it much more brief. Yeah. Um, just because this could evolve into something that it makes sense then to do something a little differently. Then uh, everybody wants to add in like what little tweak we're going to make to the agenda if we keep it like this, yeah. and I don't. Uh, can I ask, uh, Will, what, what you have written down from that? Um, so what I have is motion to schedule a special meeting on May 30th, 6 p.m., location to be determined, and authorize the president of the Atlas Governance Board um, to uh, formulate a plan and then to um, include breakout sessions as well as other sessions with board presentations. Okay. Can we amend the motion to be um, direct the board president to work with the board secretary and other stakeholders? to create an agenda and notice the meeting? Is that friendly? Just, just that? Yeah, sure. I just mean, I, I think that just to schedule a special meeting and then to work with stake, stakeholders? To develop the agenda. OK. Yeah. Director Freeman? Uh, I will say that you've just moved my vote from a no to a yes with your modifications. So. Great. Thank you for the um, Can we just tear it yep. again? Uh, so your special meeting on May 30th at 6 p.m. location to be determined. Um, and authorize board president to work with board secretary and stakeholders to develop the agenda. And notice. And the notice. Meeting. Okay. Uh, any, and that's friendly with the second. Mm -hmm. Any other board comment? Mm -hmm. Any public comment? Um, Ash? I mean, I understand that 6 p.m. is the, the good time to start. But um, with the potential for this to be like an 8 to 12 hour event, uh, I might suggest starting earlier. 
I don't want to eat the I, I agree. I, don't know. Thank, I, I definitely understand that it's going to probably be longer than that. But if we think about it, nobody even gets out of class until probably around this time anyway. So I think it'll just be us sitting in a room until people show up and then be an 8 to 10 hour meeting. Because that's how it usually goes when we have forums, you know. So um, I definitely understand. It's definitely the potential to be a, a big one. Um, <laughs> do any directors wish to change the time can, on that? Can we limit the time to four hours? You know? <laughs> yeah, no, I, mean, I was saying no, two you, hours. You really, I mean, when we did it in the past, But then again, when hours. it's a public forum, I don't know what your thoughts are. I, and I definitely understand. but. Do you all feel like we need to, can we have an ending time? Like if, when, how long do we have this space reserved for, or any space? Because that needs to probably be predetermined as well. Right. And I think that'll we be in our prerogative as I scheduling think, and reserving so room. Okay. So we'll uh, take care of it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I heard Director Brand say two hours, so I'm, I'm with you. <laughs> well, yeah, when we did the noise artist town hall, it was two hours. Yeah. And that was okay. like we literal. Are, we only we need to keep moving on okay. this. Ash? Um, actually, I heard, um, yeah, I think two, two hours is just really not enough to get anything done, um, especially if we have presentations from board members. But even if we were to only have public comments and nothing else, I, just, I don't think the two hours is enough to get anything done. And I actually heard from several different groups who uh, like filled out. Um, you know, who had been trying to speak since the start of that meeting that were not able to speak at all. Um, and so I would hate for that too, to be a, a repeat. Thank you. Okay, so I'm now going to call the question. Or Good. Did mm -hmm. you, is call there the something? Question. No. That Thank you. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? So ordered. Uh, motion passes 7 0. Um, is there any more discussion in this item before we move on to item uh, 4.9? Seeing none, uh, we're now going to enter item 4.9, discuss the power to fund the Municipal Advisory Council. The board will discuss the power to fund the MAC. Members of the board, members of the public, and the third district supervisor's office have shown an interest in initiating this service. The board will discuss funding options, the potential role or roles of a MAC, options for membership, and next steps to be taken. Um, I'll just say that this was um, one service that was uh, especially meaningful during the formation process that has been seen as an attainable initial service of the district and that several members of the board have discussed. Um, this was requested by Director Freeman to be placed on this agenda. Um, I'm hoping you can kind of provide some insight to, to what you hope for us to resolve tonight with this. Yeah, so I know that the uh, third district office has, um, as at least I've heard, that's where we're, I've heard that the third district office has pledged $3,000 uh, towards the uh, funding of the service and one thing I wanted to make certain is that we didn't just kind of like well we never really talk about it and then it just kind of gets dropped out of the budget somewhere because you know it's like maybe, maybe a year passes right so let's actually get on this and make certain that we can start coordinating with Jim's office uh, and make certain that that, that my, what I've heard is correct uh, and uh, see um, how that will work out um, uh, also uh, I know that in order to actually make this happen will require coordinating with them because we can't we can fund it, but we can't create it. And so the Board of Supervisors has to actually create it. And so that, again, comes back to the, uh, our third district supervisor, who is, uh, who's, is so interested in it that they actually uh, are willing to um, commit money to it. So I wanted to essentially have a time for us to talk with our third district representatives uh, about this service. Awesome. Um, and one thing that I'll just explain to what really uh, led a few of us who have shown interest in this service to, to be favorable towards it is um, as a body that was created to lift the self-governance in Isla Vista, this provides um, community members and local representatives with um, the, the purview of advising the county, um, not just the supervisors, but also potentially um, departments who are working in Isla Vista <coughs> on the will of the community um, to a way for the county to receive official feedback from constituents um, something that in other jurisdictions has been effective in streamlining the process because right now there's a lot of things um, that different uh, big entities working in Isla Vista, a lot of awesome projects they're working on that um, sometimes different community members feel left out of the process. This could be something to potentially um, put in place a consistent system for outreach um, and participatory decision making. Um, a MAC is strictly an advisory role. Um, but in other jurisdictions, um, how it has played out is in order for um, something to happen in the community before it can be decided on by the supervisors, it's required to go through the local MAC. Something like that could happen here. We could be going for something totally different, um, but those are options. 
Um, do any board members want to speak in particular to what they would like to see from a municipal advisory council? Okay. Um, so actually, I, I, one of the questions that I have, and this is one other reason to have this agenda item to be able to talk with our very strict representative, representative um, is, so we have the power to fund it, we don't have the power to create it. I presume that because we have the power to fund it, that we'll have influence in how it's constructed, but also money's coming from the third district's office. Uh, so it's not even necessarily that we have the most leverage there. Um, I, um, I, so I have opinions on how we might structure it, but I guess the question that I, I would actually almost just, we could spend a lot of time talking about that sort of thing, but does, what, to what extent does it matter? I don't know if Joan has an opinion about like how she thinks it will play out at the Board of Supervisors level, um, this kind of construction. Um, I mean, I guess to provide some context on that, it could, for example, be that there's a model called the county town where a community services district also is a municipal advisory council and then they have the ability to kind of like utilize multiple, uh, multiple um, uh, hats in order to accomplish uh, uh, widespread goals. Another option is we have the Alavista Community Network in the area which has been meeting for a long time and which in some ways feels a little bit like a municipal advisory council but has never taken on that particular role before. Maybe they could be modified to turn into that. Another option that has been brought up, and which is actually, I know, the, the option that has been most pushed by um, Pekin Sutar, who was the person who was um, really pushing for the Municipal Advisory Council like back three years ago during a lot of our town halls, um, is to have an, a new separate organization. And the way that that would be structured might, for example, have um, specific uh, roles. Like you can imagine like a 13-member uh, thing that has a, a business owner and has a um, somebody from the uh, um, uh, the youth projects and somebody from the park district. Is, I don't know, there's like complexity in how, I, 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 I do not remember what Pegeen's idea was and maybe even already from the three, three things I just listed, one of them is not one of the things that she would listed, but, um, but like they have some kind of structured model for how that would work. Um, and so like, I'm, how would this, do you think, play out at the Board of Supervisors level? What do you think? Are you, you inviting can pitch. me up? I'm Absolutely, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Well, Honorable Directors, I'm Joan Hartman, 3rd District Supervisor, and I'm glad to be here. I, I have another meeting and I'm on a panel, so I'll have to make this a little fast. But municipal advisory committees, as Jay suggested, are authorized by state law. It started in the 1970s, and in fact, there was a MAC in Isla Vista for a while. Uh, but the money was pulled back, and so that disappeared. When people were looking at various ways that IV could be governed. A MAC was one idea and a CSD was another, so it was kind of either or. Uh, I argued for a CSD in the campaign because it's uh, no more about us without us. Uh, that is, if you create <coughs> yourselves, then somebody else can't take it away from you. Now we're talking about a CSD and a MAC. And uh, the way a MAC would be formed is by, as Jane already mentioned, the Board of Supervisors by a resolution. And that resolution has to have a name, it has to have a geographic scope, it has to dis uh, what are the <coughs> qualifications of the members, you could have different stakeholders or it could be uh, you know, other uh, qualifications. Would they be appointed? Would they be elected? Would it be a combination of both? And what are their powers and duties? So th that's what's in the legislation about uh, what the Board of Supervisors resolution would look like. From, from my perspective, those are questions for you to answer, for you to tell me, mm -hmm. and I would go forward. Uh, I think there are, uh, I'm agnostic on the issue of whether you ought to create a MAC right now. That's up to you. I think there are some advantages in that you get broader representation. I think there may be some disadvantages. You know, how much can you chew off and succeed in uh, all at once? And as Jay already mentioned, the IV network, which has a regular meeting and, and has a broad group of stakeholders, that is an entity where the community doesn't have to come to the county. The county already comes to the community. So Public Works, 3rd District, the General Services Administration, the Sheriff's Office, they're all represented now. And, and so I think to ask them to come to another meeting uh, would be hard. Uh, but if, if you <coughs> wanted to go there, or representatives of a MAC wanted to go to the county, or, or you know switch things around, that, but that's up to you to decide. 
Uh, every supervisor has a little discretionary pot of money, $5,000. I said that I would give 3000 of that, and, and because the county is in poor budget situation, there have been many, many requests to the supervisors, but I'm giving 3000 of mine uh, to the CSD. Originally, I said it would be for a MAC because I was asked would I do that. I'm willing to write the check, get it in your bank account when you have it, and you decide how you want to spend it. Does that answer Thank your questions? You. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> 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 well, Joan, I just have one. Sure. When, you, when we talk about the powers and duties of a MAC, is that broadly defined or is it defined pretty clearly in the code what those duties and powers are? I believe it's broadly defined to advise the Board of Supervisors. On their duties? On, it, so it has to be within the jurisdiction of the county. Okay. I have a, from their report, sure. I have, it just says, in this part of the, you may be familiar with this, Bob. <laughs> you probably <laughs> <know>. <laughs> Did I write it? So, uh, an Isla Vista mat created by the county supervisors could provide direction to the supervisors on a range of issues and services in Isla Vista, including those described previously in this study and potential CSD services, such as public safety, code enforcement, public works, and community economic development. Any services not provided by the county, like tenant services, would require that the MAC request the county to implement those. Um, as noted, it's an the MAC would be an advisory body only, unlike a CSD that would have direct control over the CSD staff or contracts or new county services. Similarly, the MAC would possess very limited control compared to either the CSD. This was before the CSD was formed. When you were thinking right. either or, or but MAC now you're or both CSD and. Or CSD or and so, um, so that's sort of, it, the Board of Supervisors, the way we're thinking of it is like the County Board of Supervisors has various boards and commissions that advise. There's a planning commission, some, some vote on things and that it would be akin to that and, and advise the Board of Supervisors and it could be sort of broad. Gotcha. Jack So John, do I hear that you're, if you were to give us advice on this, um, it sounds like what you're saying is we already have a grassroots organization that's been formed organically and has a broad constituency that already is interacting in a policy way with the county in terms of expressing their needs and desires, and that's the community network. Do we really need to form another agency and that's essentially going to do the same thing, which yeah. would be top-down yeah. as opposed to organic? The, the IV community network is, <coughs> uh, I don't know how many years it's been operating, but it's very successful. But its, it's charge currently is to share information. So they, it, this would be a, a, a slight change if they were to be asked to be the municipal advisory committee, because they would have to have more formality. Uh, in terms of their meetings, probably in terms of notice and, and, and minutes, and and then they may have to vote and give advice. So so this would be an evolution for that body, as I understand it. But um, just as someone who's organized various things, if you've got an existing group. Um, why not build on an existing infrastructure rather than to create something else? And at least from the county's perspective, we attend, uh, I don't know, six, seven meetings. <laughs> I'm often there with <laughs> you, George, uh, and others of you. But uh, So I think it's asking a lot to stretch us over more meetings. So something may have to shift. But um, I wouldn't deign to advise you. I just raise these as issues for you to consider. And, and as I said, uh, I'm happy to put my money on the table for however you want to use it. Just give me a bank account. <laughs> Thank you so much. We're good to discuss that. Oh, no, not for you. I'm sorry. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Grant? Yeah, so I just had, shifting gears a little bit, a more technical question uh, as I'm looking at the financial feasibility study, too, and maybe someone who's more involved in that study process can answer this. Um, but the minimal cost uh, for a municipal advisory council was budgeted at $3,000, um, which is exactly the amount of money that we have on the table. But my understanding is that 
The reason that that is a minimal cost is because it's under the impression that we have an FTE, a general manager, who is handling the administrative side of that, preparing materials and doing what admittedly would probably be little management, but there still would still be some staff time associated with that. So someone who was involved in the study, I don't know if any of you can answer that question, Darcel or Jonathan or Jay or... Jay? Well, I think we're going to finish asking. Oh, my question is the minimal cost that's budgeted for at $3,000, that's un under the assumption that we have a full-time employee, correct? Well, so first of all, $3,000 doesn't... doesn't Pay for a full-time employee. Yeah, yeah, but I'm saying, <laughs> so, I'm saying no. the three thousand dollars is um, for the three thousand dollars was, was yeah was to make certain that there would be um, uh, staff available during the meeting, um, which would not be an FTE. It would be a, yeah. it would be a very part-time person um, yeah. in order to take minutes and distribute um, uh, notices and to um, do the. Um, uh, uh, be able to receive phone calls and essentially the same kinds of like very minimal things that right now uh, we are we are struggling horrifically without having access to. Um, the um, uh, there was contention about whether that number was high, um, or, but uh, the county I believe was the people who really really pushed that this is the cost that it would be, and because the county um, would be the entity that constructs it, we don't have as much flexibility in order to. Okay to manipulate that uh, okay. but I and you know again I say the county there was a per maybe Bob as somebody who was in the county at the time had I a different mean, opinion. I had a different <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll say that the I representative at the meeting who was yeah. from the county that's what I mean by that. I'll, I'll say <laughs> that I, I asked the question because in some other things I've seen seven thousand dollars budgeted for it so I'm asking if there is some other assumed staff time that went into this three thousand dollars or that made that cost so low. Director I, I, I would just say is, uh, I think this is something that you have a committee mm -hmm. of our board look at, because uh, who knows what it costs mm -hmm. to right. run. Okay. Um, I just wondered if anyone else. So I would, uh, I would recommend that we send this to the to committee. Um, formation. It can, it cannot go to formation at this time. No, I don't think. Okay. I think there's yeah there should be a video. Specifically to this. I think the dip, I think w this is part of the latent powers issue. Really, when I start thinking of this, are we as a district going to advise the county on their services in a formal way? Hey, we want you to do this. This is how we want you to improve that services. Or someday we can exercise our latent power and say we want to run that service and we want to. You know, we want a tax exchange agreement. Hey, LAFCO, it's just like Jay brought up a bit about solid waste. You know, we can advise the, the county on to a municipal uh, advisory committee on how to improve its solid waste program, or we could say, hey, we think we should be we'd be better off running that solid waste program closer to the community. That's kind of how I'm thinking the difference of of this work. You know, a community services district can run that service instead of the county. A municipal advisory committee can only advise the county how to improve that service. But I, I don't that's how I, that's how I'm sort of thinking of this. Yeah, Director Freeman? Um, so a municipal advisory council, if you are correct, um, is, is advisory and we have the option to take on some powers, but we don't have the ability to take on all powers. There's a lot of things that the county does that a special district can't yeah, that's do, and, and, and including, including just a basic one is a lot of the laws that apply to us. Um, there are things that no matter how many powers we turn on, we don't get the ability to have influence over laws when they happen to affect okay. us. Okay, sorry, go for it. I have a question. Yeah. Can the entrance look into how much <coughs> a Mac would cost? Is that not allowed? No, that's absolutely allowed. But um, the direction we have to give is to a director, not the intern. So if we um, go to a director to have an intern look into it, because I feel like also just doing independent research doesn't really need a committee. Right, absolutely. Is this something that could go to the community engagement ad hoc committee? Do you feel that it's... I don't believe that it is under the community engagement ad hoc committee's purview. Okay. Um, I do know there's a contact at, at the county, Dennis Bozanovich, yes. and he recently was up at Alameda County, and he actually served on, uh, through their CEOs, served in uh, as staff to three MACs. So maybe we could, someone could contact Dennis, he's kind of our, our liaison into the CEO's office. Somebody could call him and ask him what it costs to run a MAC. They're, they're probably big in Alameda County, but 
Um, he was uh, actually talking to me about whether they were functional or dysfunctional, you know, so we might be able to get some good information from him on a real, you know, a map that's in existence. Totally. Director Freeman, would you like to further examine this and I report be, back to I the board? I would be happy to do so. Awesome. Uh, would you like a motion or just a... Um, maybe a motion would be better? Sure. Uh, I move to designate Director Freeman as the point person regarding uh, the Municipal Advisory Council uh, to meet with stakeholders and uh, bring a report back to the board um, when necessary. Um, do we have a second? I'll second. Okay. I'm fine with this. I was thinking more to authorize Director Freeman sure. to look into this because he's yeah. probably should we don't need to make him the sole let's, person. Let's yeah. authorize. First person card is the first I would give him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> authorize Director. Direct friendly Bob. Yeah. So authorize Director Freeman to, and what do you have after that? Will. Authorize Director Freeman uh, as the point person for the MAC to uh, meet with stakeholders and bring back the report uh, to the board when ready. So do you want that point person part taken out, were you saying? To, yeah. to authorize Director Freeman to meet with stakeholders right. and a report on the MAC? Yeah, I don't, want to be, I don't want to be the point person right. for yeah, the yeah. advisory council. I want to just be authorized to go. Okay, and sounds good. <laughs> right. So if we take out that part and then add municipal advisory council to the end so it's clear he's meeting with stakeholders and giving a report on that. Once you have that, yeah. just read it with that. So authorize direct to meet with stakeholders um, and bring back a report, uh, or bring a report back to the board um, on the map. Okay. Um, is that friendly with the first and second? Yes. Cool. And uh, it's written exactly how you read it? Exactly how I read it. Fantastic. Any public comment? Thanks for editing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all, any more board discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? So ordered 7 0. Um, motion passes. Any more discussion on this before we uh, move on? Seeing no discussion. Okay, now we're, um, since we took those items out of order, that's, uh, we've concluded 4.7, 4.9. We're going to go um, to 4.2 now, back in the could regular. Could we do 4.3 and then 4.2? I think they flow better. Yes. Sure. Okay, 4.3. Consider entering into an agreement with the County of Santa Barbara through financial and accounting services. Uh, consider recommendations from the Formation Committee that the district enter into an agreement with the County of Santa Barbara Office of the Auditor Controller by, for these services. Um, we've su submitted a late attachment, which uh, was made public, <coughs> as Director Brandt mentioned, um, which outlines um, essentially what you're uh, recommending the board submit. So if you want to talk about that a little bit. So, you know, early on, we, we opted into the Treasury's accounting service, the Treasury management services, and we held off on this decision about entering into an agreement with the auditor controller to buy, provide kind of the sister services, which are the accounting part. We went back to the formation committee, and I kind of discussed the cost with the auditor controller's office. You know, got them to agree that $500 for the first two years would be reasonable. And then we enter into this plan called the cost allocation plan, which means you actually accrue your actual cost of services for those two years. And you could either get a credit or it could cost you more in the third year. So you're taking a risk if you really richly use their services, it could cost you more. Also looked into the alternative of using something like QuickBooks. That's $500 a year just to buy the software. Yeah and then you don't have any accounting policies and procedures. The auditor has a 67-page book, tells you how to you know, make deposits, how to make journal entries, how to submit the budget, how to organize your accounts. We did a bunch of work with um, it prior to the formation of the district that I think we have a good accounting structure. So I just think for, you know, it's like making a deposit. You should have two people doing it. One person makes a deposit, the other person does the accounting entry, they exchange documents, you have more checks and balances in the system. It's all designed. And so I just think we should go in this direction and use this service. Fantastic. And just and we worried about the cost, you know, to beginning, but now we're starting to see some money from, you know, I'm going to make a contribution of $1,000 a year for the next two years. So. Uh, that's my pledge to the district, and hopefully that would pay for 
accounting services, some business cards, and a contribution towards insurance. And so um, with that, um, I think this is the way we should structure this. Absolutely. And uh, so the $500 that you have listed here, that, that's in consultation with the Auditor Controller's Office. You've arrived at that? Yes, yes. Cool. Uh, Father John? No, just scratch uh, Got it. Uh, Director Brick? So, and just to clarify, so this is an agreement that is pretty standard, uh, and it's from the Auditor's Office? Right, and actually I designed it, and I think we're missing a page. It actually probably oh. would go to the Board of Supervisors for their signature. So, oh, okay. My bad, I'm the one who scanned it. So, yeah. um, well, I, I think that the big thing on this one, and we talk about this in the formation committee, is just what it costs. Um, so, can you explain a little further just to everybody the way that the cost allocation plan works? So, the cost allocation plan is a series of if you use county services, there are accounting services. There's different aspects of it. If we're running a payroll through them, it would cost more money because you're posting your, your payroll up into the account. If you process a lot of vendor payments, your costs are going to go up. If you go into their specialty accounting and ask them for a lot of specialty accounting services, your costs are going to go up. If we have a really expensive chart of accounts, you're, you're going to have more costs. If you add more than one fund, you're going to have more costs. So as we get more complicated, you know, these services can run up in other districts up from anywhere from five to $25,000. So as you get sophisticated in accounting, it costs you more as you use their services. But for, if we do minimal services, I think we can get away with $500 a year. Although, I've already thought about as we get in contributions that people want to dedicate to certain programs, we might have to do a little bit more sophisticated accounting and it might cost us a little bit more. So does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I have um, one uh, point just on the item nine, insurance. Each party recognizes and accepts the other party is self-insured. Either yeah. party may purchase. Um, so with that one, I'm just curious, uh, this is kind of a chicken or the egg scenario where um, <coughs> to purchase insurance we are going to need um, a transfer of funds um, and if we need if we need to have insurance before we enter this agreement how do we kind of reconcile that because my my idea is that to purchase insurance we're going to need a transfer from perhaps the university's accounts to the CSD's account um, to pay for it, but if the account can't be set up before insurance. Well, no, read, this, read the second line of that. Either party may purchase commercial insurance to cover their may. exposure. Yeah, the word is may. may. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think we're fine. Yeah, I, I don't read this to mean that the that this contract says that I am self-insured. It right. simply means but that you're not insuring me. Yeah. If, right. the, if I have any insurance, it's on my end. Oh, got it. Okay. Yeah. So I'll move uh, approval of this item. Is there a second? Second. Um, there, there let's let's make critical. that a little more specific. There are at least two very critical. Well, there's one wait, very wait, critical. Wait, 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 we're in the middle of a motion. Um, so, for Sorry. move the approval of the item. Are you? Uh, well, the item is uh, consider entering into an agreement. So I'll move that we enter into an agreement with County Santa Barbara for financial and accounting services, as presented. I'll second that. It was already second. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Um, so we already have a second on that. Uh, Will, do you have that? Title. Yeah. Perfect. Um, <coughs> director for you. There's at least one very critical typo and one very minor one. Um, yes. The, the critical typo is that we are covering the dates from June 1st, 2017 until June 30th, 20,117. 20, <laughs> that would be me really bad time. <laughs> <laughs> it's just... Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's a minor typo, which is IVCSD designated finance officers. Um, but um, I, I also will ask you, you said that this is not the complete contract? This is pretty much the complete short version of this contract, yes. I mean, usually the clauses we're, that would come after number 10 are not, like after amendment, are not clauses <coughs> that I particularly ever care about. But Where, where were I'm you reading asking. about the officers? Oh, the officers <laughs> is in... Um, it's in number six, communication, the final sentence. The auditor controller will meet as needed with the IVCSD designated finance officers 
to review the services provided. That's a minor typo. It's just the, the, the day one is kind of fine with you know, two officers. Who so I'll take that as an amendment. Oh, yeah. Friendly, um, friendly <laughs> amendment to. Friendly amendment to. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what, and I, I think the, the motion was for us to enter into an agreement. Yeah, no. it wasn't to enter into this agreement. Oh, no, not, not this specific. Yeah. What agreement would we, okay. Well, we, it would be the, I mean, we'd fix the typos is what I'm saying. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Um, so are we, are we in fact then voting to an approve an agreement or not? So the motion is to enter into an agreement. The motion is, is not specific. I would to this. say so yeah. I think well, you I wanted say, to, right? Well, I, that's what I said. As presented. So. As presented. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So but my okay. last words were yeah. as that's why. Okay. We're going to need to tighten that up um, to make it clear to someone because uh, in the initial agenda this wasn't included. So. Okay. Um, so how do you anyone want, have how do you ideas? Want to that up? I mean, I think it should just be a motion to enter into an agreement with the County of Santa Barbara for financial and accounting services. We have that, but do we need anything specific to the content of this document? I don't think so. If anything, there should be just an authorization of the board president to sign all relevant documents. Okay. <coughs> so, so with that, um, because there's also the mention of finance officers in here. Should this at this point just be the responsibility of the board president to go and initiate? Yeah, well, we're going to talk about the finance officers on the next item. Right. And um, I'm trying to explain that a little bit. Yeah, but the board president's signature, I imagine, would be required. Yeah. And on you, this could, you could appoint the finance officers on the next item, Jay. Right. My question, though, um, so after this motion, will it be me who goes to the county? Um, to inquire about entering into this agreement and yes. subsequently enter it? Like, mm -hmm. or is there more work that needs to be done? No. Um, well, unless it? they don't like the agreement. <laughs> I just used another form of the agreement and had they done it. Okay. Um, they don't even have these agreements. Yeah, it's, most direct, it's directing you to enter into an agreement. Okay. So, which I'm totally cool to do. I'm just yeah. making sure there's no more steps on your end at this point. No. You're handing it off mm -hmm. to, to me to That'd go fulfill? Yeah. Okay. Right. Thank you. Well, there's some other tricks to this that we'll discuss in the next item. Okay. Director okay. Freeman. Does no one have a copy of the final page of the agreement? Yeah, if there's if there's more to this agreement, I we can't vote on on this specifically. Well, we're not voting on this specifically. We're authorizing you to enter into it. I mean, well, let's ask Bob first. Bob, do you have the it's thing? Mine. Well, it hasn't been provided to the public, so we yeah. can't add it to, to We it. can distribute it to the public though. We can bring it back to the next meeting. Yeah. Okay. And I totally want to move on, this, but just want yeah. to make sure we do. Just bring back the final agreement to the next meeting because that gives me the authority to go back to them and have them look at the agreement. That they oh, great. Okay, so we're authorizing Director Geis to consult with the county and on finalizing, finalizing the agreement. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Do, we, yes. do we have that? Yeah. Read it yeah. back, please, once you Friendly have it. Yeah, move into an agreement with County Santa Barbara for financial and accounting services and authorize Director Geis to. Um, uh, coordinate with the um, county regarding the formalized agreement. Okay. And Consult with the county. So we'll county. replace that. Yeah, but I, I, you know, as a mega, that's, I'll agree to that, but we need to get this account open. Absolutely. Because we yeah, need to I get agree. money into it, and time is becoming of the essence yeah. here. No, so I'm all for that. I mean, if you want to call a special meeting to do this, well, okay, so number one, the account's open. Okay. <coughs> <coughs> discuss a technical detail in the next okay. issue, but the okay. account is open. The fund is okay. established. If, if I had a check in hand, I could probably walk in there and get it deposited. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. Wait, so I just have one question. Is there another page to this agreement? I think there is. If we're going to be sending it to him, though, and we don't really need it, then can we just show it to the next meeting? Does it matter? Well, I mean, you know, time, I, I agree with George, like, time is kind of the essence on this one. So, I mean, if you can, just tell so the board So, this is notice, aren't we not allowed to talk about it, you know? No, we, we can talk about it, yeah. just we don't have a, something to refer to in our motion right now. Uh, yeah. But I think what we have is director guys going back to finalize it and bringing it back for immediate consideration, right? Yeah. Perfect. I mean, I, I'm okay with that. It's just that that, I mean, would, Okay. It seems unnecessary if there isn't another page of this. Yeah, it may be intentionally left blank. It may be one of those, like you have in contracts sometimes. Right, but then also, Director Guys, you said that you do want to make sure they're agreeable on this, and I think you yeah. being the former auditor controller will be more effective than me. Yeah, yeah that'd be fine. 
Great. No, um, we should just go back and check it. We'll, but okay. This is just a formality. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Could you? Uh, yeah. Right uh, so the motion is to move into an agreement with the County of Santa Barbara for financial and public services and authorize Director Geist to consult with the County of Santa Barbara to finalize the agreement and bring it back to the board for consideration. Director Freeman. Wait, so then if I heard correctly, that motion still says that we will have <coughs> enter the agreement, not just finalize yeah, the agreement? There is a second page. Yes, yeah, so move to. There isn't? There is. There is. There's a signature page on the agreement. Okay. Uh, okay. So, um, so move. Move to. Um, uh, move into an agreement with the County of Santa Barbara for um, financial and financial services and authorize Director Geis to consult with the County of Santa Barbara to finalize the agreement and bring it back to the board for consideration. I think that last part is all we need here. Mm -hmm. Authorize Director yeah. Geis to... 11, 12, 13. Right? Yeah. Okay, and uh, once you get that, just last time. Uh, so what, just what does it say now with what you took out? Um, what part do you want me to take out? Move into... Move into an agreement. Okay. So that first step. Yeah. So just authorize director guys? Yes. Gotcha. So it's authorized director guys to consult with County Santa Barbara to finalize the agreement and bring it back to the board for consideration. If you're making a motion to accept the agreement, why do you bring it back to the authorization? Because we're not making a motion yeah. to do that. Because there's a part missing. Um, I don't know what the motion says. Though. We just took out that first part. Okay. Yeah. Is that friendly <laughs> with the <laughs> maker in second? Okay. Any more public comment? Ben? Um, I think this is probably the right way to go, but if it's money that's the issue, because there are students on the board, you can probably get QuickBooks for free through the university um, because it's an accounting <laughs> software. I think we're looking for professional <laughs> services, right? But yeah. I'm just, I'm Thank you. Thank you. Because it's $500. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it. Any other public comment? Any more board comment? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? So ordered 7 0. Oh. <laughs> Any more discussion on this item before we uh, go to 4.2? Okay, moving to 4.2. Consider the creation of financial slash accounting officer positions. Um, director, guys, if you want to yeah. tell us about this. So when we first did this, these are more, I don't want to say clerk duties, they're accounting duties. There's, and there's two sides to this. There's somebody that has to make deposits. At, to start off, there's somebody that needs to make deposits at the bank. The treasurer contacted me and said, I need their contact name, I need their number, I need their email, and oh, by the way, I need your mailing address. I said, well, the first one's a problem, but <laughs> I could almost make one up. For <coughs> so I'll, I'll see what we need to do to get beyond that block, but we just need to address somebody that's the contact for the treasurer's office. Same thing in this agreement, we need a contact for the auditor's office so that when somebody initiates a transaction in the financial accounting system, they have to be an authorized user. And so my suggestion was some other board of director other than me be the finance officer for the district. The per if I initiate a document or if I was the controller position or assistant finance officer, if I initiate an accounting transaction, that other director would have to approve those transactions. Could be, you know, and so we want two parties in every transaction and we want two sides to the ledger, somebody on the treasury, somebody on the accounting. And that's what we were suggesting here. Um, that create the position of the finance officer, I was really gonna put that person overseeing the process and make you know overseeing the controller and if you guys wanted me to I'd be the doer for a while not that I want to do that for very long because I'd like somebody else to learn how to do the do I mean but somebody has to be the appointee and it'd probably be easier if I initiated some of the transaction and the financial accounting system would probably be cheaper and more efficient, but then eventually I would like to turn that over to the acting general manager or someone else. But there probably should be a director that's approving the transactions of the, the, the acting general manager or any transactions that I would wish to make. So we were suggesting Natalie do it. Really? Good thing you showed up. Oh. 
Well, one thing I'll say. Um, or the president could do it too. Well, I don't <laughs> think either of us could do it because um, by law, if I remember correctly, in the community services district law, you can only hold one officer position on a special district. So let's not call these officers. Let's call on clerk <laughs> one and two. I'm. I mean, that's great, but I don't want to. I don't want to. Yeah, but I, this is good. well. This is a really serious. I, uh, yeah, no, I, I agree. I, I agree, though, that we're I'll not that, you know, designating you know. what would be a corporate officer right. under California corporate law. I'm talking about officers of a board of directors. That's what I mean, and, and and essentially that's set out. In in California corporate law, which essentially says all corporations, including this one, nonprofit, have to have direct directors and officers. But we determine who those officers are. And and I think what Bob is saying is this person would not be an officer. So let's not call them officers. Let's just say in the motion number one, direct just direct the, the um, one of the directors to be the contract for the treasurer, and then direct another director to be the contact with the auditor. And then those two same persons would be the ones, the, the directors that could initiate transactions with the treasurer or the auditor. Does that make sense? And then there is no, <coughs> it's just a director they're dealing with. I prefer that way. Uh, Go ahead. Brent and then uh, Freeman. So I just want to get back to the main reason like that we need two people. This is for deposits and withdrawals. You need two signatures on the check or the form, correct? Uh, in, on a deposit, you would be able to do a <coughs> deposit with a single person, but they would be a depository recognized by the Treasury. On a withdrawal, it would take someone to authorize the transaction and then someone else to approve that transaction. Okay, so then in that case, um, I guess my understanding of this may have shifted a little bit, and uh, I think that it would be a good idea for one of those co-signers on the withdrawals to be the president of the board, um, rather than just creating another yeah, office right. that right. might be unnecessary yeah. um, and might get us in a weird officer position with how many officers we have. Um, but I think having the financial officer for basic accounting and record keeping obviously is something that we need. So. They're not an officer of the board, they're a director. Well, one thing I need to just make clear, um, what we have on our agenda is the recommendations that was presented, and we are considering the creation of a finance officer, which I, I really like the ideas of having like a pre the president perhaps as a signator yeah. um, and one other designated person. Why don't you refer these back to formation and we'll recraft them. Okay, that's fine. Does that um, make sense? I mean, I, I think we can take action on it now I think I mean I think we can take action on creating the position but um, no one nowhere in here does it talk about um, getting someone to be a depository, depository. Yeah, let's, let's bring these back to the formation and we'll make them clear sure and I think that'd be okay. an appropriate way to do it because I don't want to whoever needs to be these two designated people that are authorizing these transactions are also going to have to get access <coughs> to the internet of the county and they're going to have to be authorized to go in behind the firewalls to execute these transactions. And it's a pretty efficient way to do it, but it, it does take some um, computer savvy and they're going to have to load it up to our personal computers too, software. So we oh, have to be willing to accept that. And we'll go to Freeman and then Thurlow. So am I heard correctly that we are governed by California corporate law? Well, we're not. Yeah. Let's just let's drop yeah, that. Let's, so let's move. Yeah. We know oh, that we're governed by community services district Okay, law. okay. So, um, I mean, the, the, the California Society of Municipal Finance Officers makes it almost indirectly sound like maybe that was a correct comment. I mean, for what it's worth, there are the only required positions under California general corporation law are a uh, chairman um, and a secretary and a chief financial officer. Uh, and then the municipal, the California Society of Municipal Finance Officers actually makes reference to um, the Chief Financial Officers uh, Act um, of 19... Yeah. 90, and then there's uh, the chief chief financial officer of a public agency is the corporate officer, primarily responsible for managing the finance. But but that's 
we're just confused. Well, okay. These should be employees, and we're confusing things right. with the yeah, right so we're yeah. But we're going to keep running. But Jay, just so you know, like uh, I think what he's uh, referring to there is, as a special district, one of our powers is the okay. corporate power, and that's the power to enter into services and pay okay. for that. I mean, so I, I don't think it's referring to that. this up. Okay. I don't cool. I was okay. Director Thurlow. Okay. What, what action is suggested oh. by you, Director? I think it's going back to the refer back committee. To committee. Refer yeah. back to the formation <coughs> awesome. committee. Thank is you. that a motion? So I refer it back. Second. Yes. Okay. Thank so, you. motion to refer this item back to the formation <coughs> committee. <coughs> by Gus, uh, seconded by Jordan. Yeah, my, my only comment is are we going to be able to deposit money into our account in the meantime? If we would follow the instructions of the treasurer and I can tell them who the contact was that they could put on the deposits. Well, list. I just want to make sure that, you know, we have, we have to take care of a couple of financial right. issues right away. Right. And yeah. we're working on getting the money to flow in. And then if all of a sudden now everybody's just carrying around checks in their pocket, yeah. waiting for the formation committee to yeah. meet, I'm a little bit I worried about but that. Here's, here's my thing. Um, on here, it's discussing accounting and record keeping. Nowhere on here is it talking about creating uh, someone to carry this out, which I think is something we have to discuss. Um, but yeah, and well, that, maybe that should have been on here, but that wasn't put on here. Maybe now. we should have a special meeting to get this issue ironed out. Yeah. Okay. In any event, we're in a motion, so we should vote on it. Yes, and could you just read back the motion? <coughs> yeah, so um, I have it as uh, refer item 4.2 on the entire thing. Um, back to formation committee because I believe you guys are discussing um, financial officer, controller, and the direction of the policy committee just because none of that has been ironed out. Is that correct? Right, but we don't need all of that. No, I just, just summarizing that I summarized it as just the entire 4.2. So just refer item 4.2 back to committee. Mm -hmm. Yep. Great. Okay. Formation committee. Um, this is the second? Yep. yep. So made by uh, guys, seconded by Jordan. Any right. public comment? Any more board comment? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? So if somebody ordered. gets a check in their pocket, I think we can walk down. We'd have to go downtown. We could go into the treasurer's office and we could get a deposit made. Okay. And we're speaking about that in the role of the finance officer, right? No. We're just well, that's how it's agendized, so then we can't speak about it. If do, it's we do, do we finish the vote? Sorry. Yes. Okay. We did. We did. Yeah. I wanted to request if we moved over to item 4.8 because I just realized that I think we have representatives from the Islandist Attendance Union here with us today. You might be interested in that. If you guys see Daniel over there. Are, are we uh, finished with this item? Yes. Okay. Um, that, that'll be fine. <coughs> item 4.8 discuss the power to create a tenant mediation program. The Board of Directors will discuss the power to create a program. Um, and as I reported um, at the special meeting in my meeting with representatives of the Chancellor's Coordinating Committee on Isla Vista, um, they seem to have interest in exploring this program, um, including seeing what all the services currently being offered by the Community Housing Office, the Santa Barbara Rental Housing Mediation Program, and Isla Vista Tenants Union, seeing what the existing services are, and um, seeing if there are some different things that should be considered for going forward. Um, and. Were you interested in presenting to us by any chance, or? Um, I can go up there and ask, clarify any questions. Mm. Oh, okay. Um, and this was actually, I put this on as a request of Director Thurlow. That was uh, requested at the end of the second meeting, May, May 2nd meeting. Um, and I think what we want to do in the future is get a presentation. Exactly. So that was, a, the point is, since we have to agendize everything, um, the point was that we need to get a presentation and then we need to do some homework about where all the services fit mm -hmm. and figure out where are the holes in the services. And also at the same time, um, the unit, as you folks probably know, the university is re-looking at its community housing office and how it functions mm -hmm. and how it functions particularly mm -hmm. in terms of, so there's a real opportunity right now for the university as it looks at its community housing office for the tenants union and for the Santa Barbara Housing Task Force to all kind of come together and come up with a plan for providing in particular I think mediation services which is for everybody, mm -hmm. for everybody in Isla Vista. So the reason I put this on there is that there's, the, it, it's a good time right now but again time is of the essence. The university is going to want to 
you know, put in place a community housing, a new sort of form for community housing. Office. So the question is, is how do we, we as the CSD, want to interact with tenants union and the university in prov in helping to provide a service <coughs> in terms of in the community? Director Peter, um, there was a momentary look of confusion and shock, I believe, because um, it made it sound like we were expecting a presentation from the Tenants' Union, and I think we were expecting a presentation from Community Housing Office and possibly Rental Housing Mediation. Oh, I was just asking based on the fact that... No, no, there was no that's after... Al, you, there was that comment, and then in the context of that comment, George made a comment about, like, I had agendized this, and I'm interested in that presentation, and so I just wanted... No, no, I was, just, I was just clarifying yeah. that it's not that we were expecting a presentation from you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Director yeah. Brent? So. Oh, I was just going to say, just on that note, um, I understand, I heard something about the attendance union possibly getting a grant for something like this. Can you speak to that at all? Yeah. Is it okay to talk to Sure, that's fine. Okay, I don't know. Um, so, there have been discussions with the attendance union about contracting tenant mediation services uh, by the, hopefully by the summer. Um, we have been in contact with the Santa Barbara Rental Housing Mediation Program, um, and unfortunately, they were not able to provide tenant mediation services. Um, they were not interested in entering a contract with tenant team, and so we're actually exploring different options. Uh, we've been in contact with Comfort Resolution as a potential tenant mediation service organization. Can you explain why the Santa Barbara group is not? Good? Yeah. Is it a money issue, or is it a? I have an email. If you don't mind me, I can read it. Please, please. Um, so after additional review and <coughs> our management team has decided that the city's rental housing mediation program will not be entering into a contract or an agreement with the Ivy Tenants Union for landlord tenant mediation services. At last evening's city council meeting, our tenant protection measures, uh, the staff received direction to look into options to enhance rental housing mediation for city residents. This means that the RHMP may be undergoing some changes regarding its provisions of services to the city of Santa Barbara tenants and landlords. The RHMP is a program of the City of Santa Barbara and the staff need to focus on city residents before expanding services to other jurisdictions. Um, and that, that was the end of the email. Can, okay. can you, would it, would it be possible to provide that letter to us um, so it becomes a public record or do you, are you concerned about that? Um, I don't think I have any concerns about that. It's a private email. Well, maybe check with them because I think it would be good for yeah. all the discussions to keep everybody because, again, I think yeah. I, it actually was coming from some folks at the university that we should reach out because they have, a, you know, Santa Barbara has a really good program <coughs> and maybe we could figure out a way to bring them out here. So that information you're providing is really, really valuable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Director Freeman? Yeah, cause we actually had representatives of the Rental Mediation Housing Task Force, not under this current thought process they had, but uh, by, uh, attend uh, the EB3 setup meetings that they saw facilitated, and they were actually yeah. excited and they were talking about budgets. One thing I will bring up, of course, is that maybe they wanted to turn you down for some okay. particular reason, and this was a good reason to bring that up, and maybe it'll be different if a government yeah. approaches them as opposed to the tenants union approaches them. Um, I, I, I'm just, we, we can't necessarily think that, oh, well, we, 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 yeah. they sent a letter to them, and so now, well, maybe we just won't. Yeah. 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 Director Brown. Well, what I would say is that we should all review the action that the city council took and see how that could possibly affect their operations, but also keeping in mind something that we talked a lot about during the AB3 process, which is that um, because I remember when we talked about tenant mediation, or when I talked to people about it in the community, people would be like, oh, don't we already have that in IV? We have the tenants you did. But they're two separate things. You do a lot of great advocacy work mm -hmm. for tenants who are in those crappy situations uh, with their landlord who's abusing them. But in the mediation context, the strength of mediation is that they are supposed to be neutral. Um, right. And I know that in any conversation about contracting with a specific agency or a nonprofit or whatever it is to provide mediation services, the root of the conversation always gets back to uh, is this the right group to be doing this? Are they neutral or do they favor one way or the other? So, um, so yeah. can, I make, can I make a motion? And the motion would be that we invite the Santa Barbara. I, I keep missing <coughs> the name. Santa Barbara Rental Housing Mediation Program. 
can, it, uh, program. can it is it is program. So and that was part of me putting this on here was so that we could uh, move on to the next step, which is to have them come and maybe make a presentation to us at our next board meeting about um, not only to hear from them about what's going on, but maybe get some ideas about what we could do mm -hmm. in a similar vein. That's great. Um, oh. And is there a second for that? I second. Wait, she had her. Back. We're in the middle of a motion, though. Um, I second. One moment. We'll go right there. Um, did, uh, Will, what do you have? Sure. Invite the rental housing mediation program to make a presentation to the IBCSD board of directors at an upcoming meeting. That's fine. I just have a couple of questions. Does the community housing office do mediation? No. Only for students. Yeah. Only for students. And, and actually, you may know this better than I do. Yeah. Community housing. Community housing office. At, well, it, it's a part of the UCSB Student Affairs, so they only serve UCSB students. They don't not open. For do they do mediation though? They do. They do mediation. Okay. okay. In, inside Isla, in Isla Vista, oh, yeah. and on campus. No. Just, just on campus. Just on, on campus. campus. Okay. But for Isla Vista oh, no, residents, but they do Isla Vista. Who are UCSB? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, okay. UCSB students. Right. But that helps. And then also to clarify, if there is an SBC student living in the house of mm -hmm. an UCSB That's student, right. they are okay. all qualified right. for the ten, for the tenant mediation service. So then I just have one more question. Do we do we know if the Santa Barbara Rental Housing Mediation Program is established by ordinances of the city of Santa Barbara? So the city council has established ordinances that forces mediation upon its residents. Mm -hmm. I'm uh, not sure. It's a voluntary program. Yeah. You but think it's voluntary? Oh, it is. It is. It is. Yeah. Definitely is. Um, but just so, and for context, um, the Santa Barbara Rental Housing Mediation Program, they also contract with the city of Carpinteria <coughs> to provide <coughs> the service Goleta. and Goleta. And then for the unincorporated area of the county, we can receive technical assistance. So like we can call with questions about our rights as tenants, but we cannot receive mediation services at this time. Um, was there the whole unincorporated county does not get mediation services, just right. assistance. Mm -hmm. So the county of Santa Barbara does not have a tenant mediation program. And even that assistance is under contract with the Santa Barbara City. Yes, but ju just for like phone assistance, not for any sort yeah, of mediation. I got you. Okay. Yep. Can I ask a question? Or something? Do you know how much Galita, for example, pays for that? Or do, uh, you, do our tenants? Pay? Not often. But we had. Um, oh. oh yeah, you have the notes. Yeah, you have the assistance. Yeah, the notes. Yeah, yeah. And the yeah, well, and the and I can just I've tell you that in, um, in Appendix A of the Financial Feasibility <coughs> Study, um, on the services and cost estimation chart, it has it at $30,000 for the net cost. So, okay. but that wasn't accurate. That wasn't based on actual cost from the rental housing mediation resource. That was okay. corrected when they came in the office. <coughs> <coughs> Director Freeman? The number that I remember the rental mediation housing task force bringing to us was twenty-five thousand uh, dollars. I during that meeting, I pushed yeah. back on them, and they actually were like, you know, it could be as high as fifty thousand dollars, depending on how many problems you end up dealing with. Um, but yeah, that's the thing. It was like hard. So we were going to budget on the high end when we thought we were going to have money. We were going <laughs> to budget on the high end, um, and then alter it, alter the contract in later years, depending on how many. Um, mm -hmm. it was, but Jonathan, do you have to yeah, CARP pays. Uh, Twenty-seven thousand, and Goleta pays eighteen thousand. Oh, sorry. No. Yeah, CARP pays. This is really done. Up. Sorry about this. Um, can you tell? Goleta's eighteen. Carpentry is eight thousand seven hundred twenty, yeah, okay. and Goleta's eighteen thousand five hundred thirty, mm -hmm. and the county is twenty-seven thousand five hundred, and the housing authority is ten thousand. Director Freeman? You can't quite directly compare the contracts, though, because um, Galita doesn't contract, I think, for face-to-face -face mediation. <coughs> they contract for telephone mediation, and because uh, there's like different levels of, of things they provide to all the different groups. So. And I'm yeah. sure a lot of this will be clarified in okay. the yeah. presentation. Okay. Yeah. Um, but Director Brown? Yeah, my, my point was just going to be the service is going to be utilized more here in Iowa so than it would mm -hmm. be in carpentry or Galita. So yeah, I think these are all questions we can be answered at the presentation. Cool. Uh, so, well, could you just read that? Yeah, so I have invite some of the rental housing mediation program to make a presentation to the IBCSD at an upcoming regular meeting. Fantastic. And then, um, what will we move to in seconds? 
that was by Thurlow and Sorry, Jordan. Great, yep. um, okay, any other board discussion on this motion? Any public comment? Yeah, I had a question. Would the CSD be open to contracting other mediation services besides Santa Barbara Mediation? Like on resolution? Yeah, on um, the courthouse? Or um, is it just that p potentially, I mean, potentially it's in our power to contract um, just to provide the service. So we have um, we have uh, some options with that. That's one that was brought up during the process. Yeah, uh, Director Freeman. Actually, I believe this is one of the rare ones of our powers that if we even wanted to get a bunch of volunteers, hire some staff, and run it ourselves, we could. I'm not suggesting we yeah. do, but like that's how broad of a scope we actually can do with this one. Right. We have much greater autonomy in this yeah. service than any other, because in <coughs> legislation it just says create, where a lot of our other ones are contract for or that's fund, right. but this one yeah. says create. But anyway. Um, do we know if we like the city of Santa Barbara charges for these services? Do they make money, or is it all just supported by the general fund? Supported by uh, the general, general fund. fund. You think it's all just taxpayer dollars supporting rental mediation, and the landlords don't pay if they they don't they don't. I perhaps you know perhaps there is a fee base to it for the city where um, that the landlords are paying, but in our in our discussions it would just be coming out of whatever revenue we were to have. But anyway, let's uh, decide on this this question. Um, is there more public comment? Is it related to this motion? Okay, we'll, we'll just vote on this and then come right back to you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? So order 7-0. Go ahead. I was just kind of curious, uh, Director Durillo, um, has the university contacted the Community Housing Office about the annuation program and implementing it for all at Isla Vista residents? Like I, I think we're talking about the recent. So, clarify, help me with the question. <coughs> help me understand. Has there been any more discussions in the past couple of weeks with the Community Housing Office about attending mediation service for all Isla Vista? Not that I know of, but I, but I think it's on their agenda. Okay. In other words, I don't think there's been any discussions in the last couple of weeks, but I do think okay. that it's on their agenda in terms of working with the CSD. Okay. So you may want to pursue that on your... Yeah. <laughs> um, and just so this is something that you two can help with. Um, one of the concerns that came up during the community process with um, talking with um, UCSB providing tenant mediation was kind of mistrust between the Latino families in the university um, and you know, kind of the and so since IBTU has a good relationship with the Latino families, like maybe bridging that. Um, mm -hmm. so. The, the big issue is that since this is funded by students, um, or student housing, money, it really can't be extended to other <coughs> without the idea of this is a gift of, you know, essentially we're taking student money. But so that's where this board can come in, right? That's to where this board different. can come in, yeah. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. So look forward to hearing that report. Mm -hmm. Any mm -hmm. other uh, discussion on this item? Thank you so much for coming. Yeah, thank oh, you so much. <laughs> Good to see you, Beth. Um, all right. Um, now we are going to go on to item uh, four point uh, four. Yes. Let me just uh, cross everything out that we've done. Um, okay. So discuss and consider draft letter to solicit pro bono legal services. Consider and take action on recommended recommendations from the formation committee regarding the solicitation of pro bono legal services. I think this is a great idea. I looked over the letter. Um, there's a few factual things for us to correct, but um, the I never like fact. <laughs> alternative <laughs> facts alternative you're using. Facts. Um, yeah. But um, <laughs> like, yeah, but Murphy. the intent of the letter, um, I think it's great, and I think we should get this out right away. Um, Director Freeman. It doesn't matter at all, and I would still be willing to send it even with this mistake, but it says the district has seven distinct areas of service, and we have eight distinct areas of service. We have eight, yes. But it doesn't really matter. And also, uh, <laughs> our tax measure would have raised um, over $500,000 rather than over two hundred. Okay. But um, it's easy to confuse that with measure O passing this week. Uh, but Director yeah, Everett? I just think this is a great way to get the ball rolling. Uh, we talked about it a lot in formation committee, and thank you, George, for drafting these letters. Um, I also just wanted to say that um, I've spoken to uh, an attorney who was at our formation committee meeting, um, and he seems like he's really interested in trying to help us out. 
Uh, so, like, I'd be glad to get the ball rolling on this, but I really want to see us keep our options open because, again, this is one of those things where I feel like we're working on a short timeline. Um, and so, um, hopefully, uh, at the next formation committee meeting, we can talk a little bit more about that. Um, but this seems like a good, easy way to get the ball rolling. Director, guys. And if I got a, we've gotten one direct solicitation <coughs> from a former UCSB person the, to the formation committee, and I think it, he said he'd sent something to Ethan a long time ago. So I don't know how, if we're allowed to put that person's name forward or how how we. Let's not pers put the person's name forward because I think I've been in contact with him too, but uh, he is someone who seems like he's really interested uh, in. He's a former Isla Vista resident, so um, oh. I just don't know how in forward. our process we get that person in the loop other than going to, you know, how do we get people that show direct interest in the in the process? Yeah. Yeah, no, I've been thinking about that too. I mean, one of the ways, I guess, is that if, like, if someone brought, like, a proposal to us, like, that would be nice. I mean... I don't think they, I'd be able to say no to that, you know, something like that. And I mean, we, we're going to have to talk about that. I think information so, in terms of what the process okay. looks like. Um, you know, now that you guys have brought it up, um, so you need a motion to send this letter. Yes. And I, how I see this is this is a letter soliciting interest because when we do, when we're ready to move forward, we will need to put out an official request for proposals. Right. Maybe we want to consider that immediately at this next meeting, but this is just something to get the conversation started, That's something right. to get okay. people thinking about yeah, this. Yeah. So I'm going to follow it up with another motion. So I'm going to make a motion right now that we authorize you to sign the letter with corrections okay. and mail it. I second. All right. Okay, so authorize the board president <coughs> to s sign the letter attach the letter in attachment B and mail it to the listed parties with corrections. Perfect. Um, all right. Any more board discussion on that motion? No, thank you. Any public comment? Okay. Seeing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Any abstention? So ordered, 7-0. So mm -hmm. let, me, let me make a follow-up motion, which is, you know, when you're dealing with professional, when you're hiring professional um, help, you don't do it in a big open setting where you have them all come in and make presentations in front of, it, it's got to be, so I would, I would recommend that the policy committee um, take up at its next meeting a protocol and procedure for us that in hiring, um, the, um, I don't know how you want to refer to it, professional positions, yeah, so including the general manager. For how to do a request for proposals for this type of thing. Right, but there needs to be something in terms of what's the interview process and who does that and is it in open session or is it in closed yeah. session and, and, you know, figure that out because you will not get, you will not be able to get three or four attorneys to come up here and in public talk about their professional backgrounds yeah, and their right. blah, 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 blah. Do you uh, think that's the same with the general manager? That's not this <coughs> discussion, but great question. Um, and yeah. do we need a motion for that for the policy? Okay, cool. Um, all right. Any other discussion on this item? Okay. Perfect. <coughs> <coughs> Okay, now uh, 4.5 University Negotiations Ad Hoc Committee membership and roll. Uh, the board will cons the board president will consult with the board on making appointments to this committee, um, and that was as directed at the last regular meeting. Um, and then we can also provide any feedback and direction to the committee. Uh, I've thought about who uh, would be best to serve on this, but I see two of the seats already pretty firmly um, in place. Um, that being. Since Director Thurlow is the university's representative and he will be in those meetings um, in whatever capacity the university defines, um, he still needs to be a member <coughs> of it, um, since he'll, he'll be there. Because um, I know you've mentioned that you'll most likely be on the university's side of the table, so to say. Oh, we're all on uh, the same side. I don't know. We're all going to sit around a circle. And excellent. I love it. <laughs> um, okay. No so, so I think uh, that Director Thurlow must be on the committee. I think that as board president, I need to serve on the committee. Um, and when Father John comes back, I want to ask him about if he'd be interested in serving on it. 
um, I see him as a great third person. Um, another thing that I considered in this is um, none of us are on overlapping standing committees, which I think will be really important because we need to make sure that we don't um, get caught up in business discussions that can't take place. Mm. Um, but but most of all, I think that this will be um, that this is representative of the community, um, being that there's a younger person, being that there's a long-term homeowner. Um, and I know that Father John has a report with uh, the Chancellor, and uh, I, I think it will, will be a, a good way to uh, move forward with this. Any, any comments on this? None, thank you. This? Cool. Well, we need to ask Father John when he returns. Yeah. But perhaps don't, don't we just do that? Don't we just appoint him right now? <laughs> <laughs> I need to ask him. Um, that's it when he comes. Have you guys done that one? I just put it on the yeah, we did. Yeah. yeah, we've already created it's, a tradition. Yeah. Just yeah. Well, and, and, we, and, and we designated the board president to make appointments, so I don't think we need a motion on this. Would right, you? we don't, but I need to consult. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, yeah I know. <laughs> no, I understand. I understand. Okay. But anyway, um, there's other things within this item that we can uh, discuss. In the meantime, <laughs> fair. Yeah. We'll uh, wait till we. <coughs> <coughs> okay, uh, Father John, are you interested in serving on the community, um, on the university negotiations ad hoc committee? With yes. Fantastic. Good. Okay. This is weird. Okay. Um, so, Will, if you can uh, make it seen in the in the minutes that um, I have appointed. Uh, Director Hedges, uh, Director Thurlow, <laughs> and myself, Director Bertrand, to serve on this uh, committee, on this ad hoc Ooh. committee. Second. So, no motion needed. Okay. Uh, but thank you. <laughs> um, All right. Solid. And now, uh, as, as far as I see this, we are uh, we're going to meet very very soon, hopefully in this next week, to discuss uh, the plan. Uh, moving forward and initiating contact, well, continuing contact with the university on uh, negotiating for this uh, service allocation. Um, but I think that we should uh, receive some direction and feedback from our colleagues right now. Um, first, George, if you could tell us a little bit about, <coughs> and you may not have a <coughs> understanding of the plan, but can you provide us any insight on kind of what you see as next steps for continuing this process that we started with that initial meeting with Dave Marshall? Um, hmm. Well, I think what the only thing I would add would come under 4.6. So why don't I wait for 4.6? Okay. Um, but I mean, do you have any kind of? I mean, are we just going to see like what the next step is after our committee meets? <coughs> so we'll report back to the board on uh, on uh, the first steps taken at mm -hmm. the next at the next meeting. I anticipate what we're going to do is um, I'll inform uh, the chancellor and uh, and David Marshall about um, this action that was taken and who's serving on the committee, and that we look forward to meeting soon um, to continue our discussions. Um, and we'll meet in the meantime to uh, discuss what we'll bring back to the board. So. Any other uh, discussion on this item? You guys are going to do great. Thank you, uh, Director Freeman. Um, so the so we're going to be doing these town halls in order to provide guidance to this committee in terms of what they are. Well, doing. to provide guidance to the whole board, but the whole yes, board. yes, yes. Whole, yeah, but it'll but be very helpful and, for and, committee and, and members. And particularly helpful for this committee. Yeah. Okay. And so uh, I'm 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 not going to hear that you're going to have a meeting and then. Before we even have the town hall decision, will be made on anything? No, okay. we'll, we'll certainly be meeting. Yeah. Um, but okay, cool. We look we look forward to the town hall. Uh, any other comments? Any public comment? Okay. Um, if that's it, we'll uh, close this item and look forward to reporting back to everyone soon. Um, now, four point six request funding for administrative needs of the district. Um, I expressed the initial idea for this uh, at our special meeting last week. Um, again, something that came out of the, the meeting with um, the Executive Vice Chancellor and other members of the Coordinating Committee. Um, and the idea here is that we um, request that a certain allocation of our um, annual allotment of $200,000 for the mutually agreed upon services goes towards necessary administrative costs um, that must be paid for before we can move 
forward to contracting for a service. Um, and some of these things may include um, insurance for the board and the district, um, office space and equipment, um, and then also if there were any like uh, perhaps accounting fees, um, should that need to be covered. Um, things that are absolutely essential for us to move forward with providing these services. Um, it was clear that this will not go to any sort of administrative staff. Um, and of the members who were present at the meeting that we had, most were favorable for this. Um, and ultimately, um, we just see this, those of us who have discussed this, see this as something that's essential. I mean, we wish that all the money could go right to services, but um, we can't get to those services without paying for these basic items. Um, so that's pretty much how I'll set this up. Um, I added this one, and what I'm asking for is for um, the board to direct me or to authorize me to uh, submit a request to the chancellor um, for um, an <coughs> initial percentage of, of the allotment uh, to be used for administrative needs. Um, and I think we should discuss what that number might be. I know the number that's been thrown around is 10%, so that would be $20,000. Um, I'd love to hear feedback on that, but Director Brandt. Well, so I know we talked a little bit uh, at the special meeting when this came up about, because my initial thought was that 10% for an administrative fee sounded sort of low. And then there was a comment made. I don't remember who people. made the comment, but it was, yeah, I know, right? Uh, <laughs> but there was also the, the comment made um, that 10% might have been the number that was calculated in because then the university has to file things differently. And so, um, I mean, and I'll I, just real quick, I'll say um, my my response to that then was that ten percent was thrown around pretty loosely. Would you right. concur with that? Yeah. That's okay. Right. So it wasn't calculated. Just to respond. Yeah. To that. So I mean, I, from both a negotiation standpoint and from uh, you know what what I think our district needs right now, I, I think that a cut that's larger than ten percent would be advantageous. Um, whether we're talking about office space. Uh, which the number that's been thrown around for that is uh, 14000 a year, uh, or whether we're talking about supplies, which I imagine could total up to probably 3000 insurance. We haven't even got quotes back from that. We don't know how much that could cost. Um, I think that the more that we can get from these administrative things, the better, um, because one of the things, you know, and I'm going to keep plugging anything that's administrative because of the fact that we, we, we're trying to move forward on these services, and that's great, but we're going to keep getting bogged down by the process mm -hmm. if we don't have that solid administrative, or not even just solid, just some sort of administrative thing to back us. And so I think that in that, on, on, with that, the more the merrier for that administrative, which is probably the same thing. <laughs> that's the kind of quote that I know. Uh, the opponents of this district uh, would love to go and run with. But, but you, let me just clarify, you're not asking for a staff person, are you? No, no, okay. no, I'm, I'm saying that I think the cut should be higher <coughs> than 10%. Okay, uh, Director mm -hmm. Friedman and then Director Fellow. I, I feel slightly uncomfortable putting a final number down on anything without some kind of budget. One could imagine, for example, that we decide to ask for 10%, we get $20,000, and if only we had $25,000, <coughs> we'd be fine, <coughs> as particularly when there's kind of like some flexibility, it sounds like, with, with, with what it is. I don't know if there's any way for us to ask for a a flexible number? Yeah, I wouldn't have I thought would. so. Oh, yeah. no, I, would, I, would. I, would, I would just be much more comfortable if only we could like quickly, maybe like I know formation committee has been looking at, for example, the cost of insurance and office and everything. If they could do a totaling of the money that they think that we would need, and then that we we have that number as input to our decision of what to send to the university. Well, I think you got that. Um, and plus, I think we need to be continuing to work on other sources of funding we can. And, and and this is uh, I just want to emphasize that this is an incredibly creative way oh, yeah. that we've come up with a way because this is outside of the area of programs and this is what in the very very beginning some some people were very very concerned about that the university's money was all going to be taken up with stuff that provided no services to to ultimately students so um, I mean I, a ten percent was just something that was pulled out. I mean, it could be 15%. Um, there is another idea, too. There's some people um, who are on the money side who are talking about the potential necessity of the district um, to need the university to front load its commitment. Not unlike it has front loaded its money that it's paying to the county. 
So, for example, we were supposed to pay a million dollars over uh, <coughs> ten years to the county. We we paid half of that in two years. Um, so, but I think it has to be there has to be a demonstrated value to this, and the, the third rail is staff. There's just real. That's just not where you want to go. So. I mean, I, I think if you came back and said a 15%, which would be 30,000. Uh, I think that's realistic. 15%? Well, it's, you know, these government guys that wear ties. I mean, you know, they need a lot of over <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, and it's just, I mean, you know, I the same argument that I would make if I were sitting on the committee is the same that I'll make to you, which is that we're going to be a lot hell of a lot more effective at providing these valuable services yeah. if we have that administrative thing so that we don't get bogged down by the process because that's what's happening here. Right. So, um, yeah, I, I think that's I, my, just, that's just, my pitch. I, just, well, let me and, I, and I understand, uh, and I, I don't think that it would be reasonable for us to ask for the staff person given the, given the situation. Uh, that is the third rail, and I get it. And, it. and it really would be helpful if the district started to come up with other sources of income so it didn't feel like the university was and you know kind of being the there's a dependency there so I'm not sorry do you want to make a motion no I just think we should fundraise for you know the the administrative services that both the UCSB and and the county don't want to pay for and that's a stipend for a general manager and a stipend for legal counsel and those things mm -hmm. that we know we need to support yeah. this organization yeah. And make ourselves a little bit more healthy. <laughs> yeah. And um, one more thing I do just want to mention, and then I'll go to UJ, is um, I'm not sure if everyone's looked at the, um, in the back of the feasibility study, the um, section that specifically talks about the, the administrative costs, um, which there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of things here that we're not going to be looking to pay for, but some of the, the items that I do think we are, um, we we would look to pay for should a request like this be fulfilled would be um, the office space which as Spencer said um, the the running the going rate that we've been hearing is fourteen thousand um, dollars as far as insurance for the feasibility study it found that the base was six thousand um, dollars and that was an estimate based on one and a half staff persons but there was no mention of the board in there um, so I'm not sure where that was factored into that number. Um, but just something for us to consider. Oh, I would love. Um, so, in the feasibility study for the base number of um, for insurance, and this is located on um, Appendix A, page seven. Um, it says six thousand dollars, and that's with four thousand dollars per full-time employee assumed. I'm wondering where the board fits into that number. I, th I think the policies would probably cost. Oh, for that oh, totally. I'm just wondering if, for, say, director's insurance was included in that number. <coughs> um, I, I assume that it was. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll. Uh, we, I think we need quotes before we draw any conclusions about the numbers on insurance, because right. we've also been talking about stuff like errors and omissions insurance, uh -huh. as distinct from just general liability insurance. Yeah. So yeah. These are all things that we need to get quotes on. Totally. Um, <coughs> But I mean, I do like the idea of fifteen percent. It's thirty thousand um, dollars. That's definitely something I'd be comfortable requesting. Um, and I'll, I mean, I'll request anything the board directs me yeah, to do. Yeah. But, um, but I do, I do. Would be great if they give us thirty and we match them with thirty. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <coughs> Director Freeman. Which, which gets to continue, I feel, I feel like we need to be thinking about having a budget at some point. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, even, even fundraising, there are other things we need to be fundraising for, such as an election. So. Didn't we recommend that go to a committee, the budget? No, but we, uh, we should have at our next uh, meeting a finance committee item, because it's a standard thing for special ed districts, standard for any municipal government, something we haven't set up yet. I don't know if we recommended it, but you did agendize it for formation. That's for formation. And I thought at last formation we recommended that it go to policy. I well, need to, I need to remove the notes on it. I'm not sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. Well, once uh, Director Thurlow gets back, uh, hopefully we can have a motion. There he is. What would you appoint me to? 
<laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Finance committee. Uh, no, I'm sure I'm the guy who has to fix the toilet, right? <laughs> uh, 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 you sure put some money in the No, that for this is a county building. It's yeah. Bob who's got to fix the toilet. Yeah. Yeah. But um, anyway, so is there um, is there any motion? Yeah. Do you want the percentage in the motion? Yes. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, I move to authorize the university negotiations ad hoc committee to negotiate for administrative needs of the district. Um, can I? Can I? With the request of a fifteen percent administrative fee charge. C can I? Can I offer a uh, First, let's get a second. Are you going to second this and try sure, to co-author? Okay. Let me second it. I think we need to direct the president to send a letter immediately to the university requesting that uh, the <coughs> university grant the CSD a 15% administrative fee in order to... to um, Okay. Yeah. Execute the grant. Okay. We'll all withdraw my motion. Uh, I move that we authorize the board president to write a letter to the University of California, to the Santa Chancellor. Barbara, the Chancellor of the University of California, Santa Barbara, um, requesting uh, a 15 percent administrative uh, allocation. Out the allocation. Yeah, that's good. Sir. <coughs> okay. Um, let's just make sure uh, we have it. Yes. And have feel free to keep typing it out if you haven't finished it yet. No, um, yeah, you haven't. Okay. It's, um, it's a quick type. Uh, authorize the president um, to write a letter to the Chancellor of the University of California, Santa Barbara, to um, request 15% of the allocated um, already promised funds or allocated to um, $200,000. Can we amend that so it says to request a 15% administrative fee charge? Gotcha out of the pledged grant mm -hmm. amount. Teamwork. And then just once you have that, read it back, please. All right, so I have authorized the president to write a letter to Chancellor UC Santa Barbara to request a 15% administrative fee charge out of the pledged $200,000. Does fee charge sound right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's clear what I have to do. Yeah. 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 I okay. Think so. yeah. Uh, Jay. Um, first thing, um, authorize, not direct. Uh, friendly amendment, direct instead of sure. authorized. Sure. Okay. Second thing is um, <coughs> for this year's allotment. Like, we don't do. Are we really trying to say fifteen percent of just like the? concept of the grant or do you want to say 15 percent of the initial years I, th I, th I think we're talking about this year yes we and are. I think that's I, I at least I was clear on that do we want to have that in the language or, I mean I'm clear on okay, that if part. you're clear on that I'm yeah. pretty sure okay um, Good. and, and uh, will you change it to direct Perfect. okay and then um, was uh, when I brought up uh, if only we had a total of the amount that we were interested in, Bob said we have that and pointed at Spencer. Do we actually have it, that totaling? A total amount of the administrative costs? Like like the costs of the insurance plus office plus various other things that were coming out of formation? Um, well, we, we have disparate. We referred that out of our committee. The cost? At the last meeting. And a, a, a report on the cost of all the no, administrative no, costs? No, we I thought at the last meeting we said that policy needs to talk about the budget formation process. But that's then, distinct from the referred, actual cost. I can't remember the minutes. And then we okay. referred something to a finance committee, did we, to prepare a budget? Yes. I think that's the two actions we took. Yeah. For, so first, Jay, there was the, we wanted to talk about policy to talk about the process of the budget, mm -hmm. meaning what's the vote requirements, what's the timetable, that kind of thing. And then we, I think we made it out of the formation committee the recommendation to create a finance committee um, to actually prepare those cost numbers and start preparation of the budget. But if you'd like us to come back and start putting together a 
well, listing of the costs that we think exist, we could do that. I was wondering if we happen to have it, because when I brought it up, you made it sound no. like we had no, it. No, so it sounds right. like we In my don't. brain, I have yeah. it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so I think we can move forward on this yeah. motion, right? Uh, any more public comment? Yeah. So I just wanted to ask, so is the process to negotiate with the university going to be the president sending a letter or the members of the ad hoc committee negotiating? The members of the ad hoc committee meeting with the representatives. I think the way that we all see this is a way to get the ball rolling. Yeah. Uh, to bring it because Chancellor's a busy man. We gotta bring stuff to his attention. So then it's expected. There's two. There's two pieces here. One is the 15 percent, which is a letter, which we're gonna ask for right, yeah. right now. And then the other piece is the ongoing discussions. I wouldn't even call them negotiations. I wouldn't say that you negotiated. There's ongoing yeah. discussions. I'm just working with what you all created <laughs> in my yeah. absence. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I'll, yeah. I'll, but. But great question. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, can we just hear the motion one more time and then vote? Yeah. On it? The motion is to direct President Red Letter, Chancellor of the University of <coughs> Barbara, to request a 15% administrative fee charge out of the pledge $200,000. Fantastic. Thank you. Okay. Any more board discussion? Public comment? Yes. Great. All those in favor? <laughs> aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? So ordered 7 0. Um, any more discussion on this item? No? Okay. Not so, uh, if I'm looking at this correctly, we only have one more discussion item. Yeah, and I'm mm -hmm. very loud. Well excuse myself. For, so before I, I leave, can I, can we, can I, uh, can we jump to the next agenda items? Yes. In other words, for the next meeting before, yes. so I can, so I would like to see us uh, put on the next agenda a discussion of committee purviews. Okay. And, um, and potential uh, amendments or redefining what the committees are doing. I think okay. it's clear that so that roles and responsibilities. Confusion. Yeah, okay. and and obviously we can do that at any time. At any time we can say, you know what, we want the policy committee now to be a, to be like the finance committee and blah 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 and, mm -hmm. and <coughs> little finance matters or whatever. So we got it. Second would be that we have a insurance presentation on the next agenda. Oh, do you want me to do it? I won't be here. No, do we have a bro <laughs> don't we have a broker? Well, I tried to contact the Lion. I should announce at the oh. beginning. I tried to contact right. the Lion. They haven't got back to me. Cool. Well, we'll we'll have a we're going to uh, need to have some item there. on that. Uh, an item on the office in terms of moving ahead on renting office space, and and then an item on um, depositing dollars. I think okay. that's just a follow-up to what we So, accounts All your and deposit. Oh, you okay. <laughs> okay. All right. And um, everyone else, we'll, we'll revisit future agenda items at the end so we can decide that there. So that's good. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thanks, George. Have a good night. See you on Saturday, right? Saturday. Okay. Saturday. No? SA, what time is it? Saturday, 12.30. <coughs> the one who's supposed to present it, so. Okay. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Thurlow is presenting at the scholarship this weekend <laughs> that he doesn't know about. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, okay. So, you as well. yeah. <laughs> so now, um, item 4.10, uh, internship program. Discuss the future of the UCSB internship program. The board will consider next steps for recruiting, selecting interns, uh, funding the program, and the scope of work of the program, especially for the summer. Um, we'll also consider reaching out to other local organizations that may be interested in partnering um, to provide more internship opportunities. Um, so I guess my, the first thing we really need to figure out is funding for this next cycle. Um, at this point, there's been no direction for soliciting future funding other than what's been allotted for, for our current internship program. Is that correct? There's been no soliciting? We haven't re requested funding for the summer, have we? As a board? No. No, I, I, no, I don't believe so. Okay, so that's something that we're going to need to determine. Yeah. Director Freeman? Yeah, now that I understand your question better. I'm, yeah. yeah. Wait, yeah. So one of the questions that I had on this item was if there was a way for us to get the program budget so that we can better understand uh, what it is that we're trying to fund, 
because as of right now, like I have some numbers around in my head, kind of the same way that we've been throwing numbers out as it pertains to administrative stuff. But if we don't have a budget, then uh, it's like difficult to see how quickly we'd be able to grow the program and what targets we'd even need to be able to do that in the future. So this is something that the board assigned formation committee to look at, look at and formation committee assigned uh, me to take a closer look at it. Uh, and that's something that we can review as well, but uh, mostly, I, I didn't find a whole lot of uh, Thank you. stuff to be able to look at. I don't know, um, like, you know, like I said, I couldn't find a budget, so um, it'd be helpful to get something like that. Director Thurlow, um, Freeman, sorry. You're not, I, I thought that the budget was, we have three interns, $1,500 per intern, 10 hours, $12 plus university overhead for benefits. That's the budget. Like, is there something I can like? What What are you asking for? Well, we, budget for it would be helpful for us to put that all on paper. Okay. Right. Yeah. It, I mean, number one, it'd be helpful to put it on paper, and number two, I think it's pretty clear that the current structure of the program is not sustainable, given that we have now spent an undue amount of time working on whether or not interns need to file financial disclosure forms. It would seem advantageous to me for us to try to work towards getting some sort of a program coordinator, or at least that'd be something that I'd be interested in looking at. And if there's no, you know, if we, if I don't have that paper in front of me, or if we don't have that paper in front of us, then it makes it a little more difficult to figure out where you're starting from. Director Freeman. Yeah, so I guess is that, so you're, you're talking about like uh, having a potential budget for a future different program, differently structured program. I yes. think I think what we're saying yeah. here is uh, so. this awesome program that we're in right now ends yeah. in just a few weeks, and yeah. we have no plan set up right. for. Yeah. The, uh, what, what, what one thing is is that so the funding that we currently have, which is the from a private donor and from associated students, um, is for the university to hire some people, which the university can do. But if we had a program coordinator, unless the university hires the program coordinator, which I think would be really awkward for various reasons, um, we probably can't ask them for money because that goes right back into the university cannot provide us government right. staffing. So we'd have to either find external funds for that um, or do something creative with, for example, working with other special districts, such as I brought up before. But And one thing I'll say in putting this item on here, I'm not looking for a program coordinator. I'm just looking to see how we can sustain what we have right now. Because right now, again, we have no plan for that. Um, so director so and the director. So in Ethan, um, in, in our formation committee, we d didn't focus on funding at all. It was in my brain. I'm saying, oh, the funding's going to go forward. Yeah. But maybe that's not the case. And so I guess we should reach out to the university and ask them if they're going to fund summer quarter. I know Spencer and I talk. talk we were the only two in the formation <coughs> committee. And we talked about, well, how many people could we handle under the current, you know, status and, you know, thinking maybe we get an acting general manager and maybe we get legal counsel by the time they started, you know, if we still thought with the number of directors in the summer quarter, maybe we could only handle three to five interns, you know, not expand to 10 and not approach, you know, Santa Barbara Community College and try and start up another internship program with them that we get in over our head. So, I mean, the three that we have are great. Mm -hmm. and. If we had five, maybe we could handle that over the summer when, you know, I don't know, people probably have jobs. So, <laughs> um, yeah. but I guess if the first thing is to ask for funding, then I say we reach out and ask for funding for the summer quarter and suggest for three to five interns. Okay. And where, do you have an idea of where we should ask for the funding? Who do, who do we get the funding from before? We asked the a university, right? From a private donor and then associated students. Well, that's what they say, it's a private donor, but I, I, I don't know, it's from the university, right? Should we ask associated students yeah. again? I mean, yeah. yeah. Uh, Are you able to I'm, talk on Am that? I okay? Is yeah. everyone okay with me speaking on it? Um, I, so I am, the, I'm just so asking the you. Finances in the Senate unallocated are finished for the year, but they just finished the budgeting process. So $127,000 just went into Senate unallocated to be redistributed to certain, um, uh, to whatever, um, as well as money being brought into certain uh, budgets, as well as executive budgets, which the EVP LA spent money on this as last time, as well as getting money from Senate unallocated. Um, so because the, the year is technically Oh, the finance and business, the new finance and business board won't meet until 
the upcoming year, but we're technically into a new budgeting, we're into a new fiscal year at this point because of the budget being approved by the Senate last week. So um, I could find out about if a request would go through, but I'm pretty sure we'd be able to make it work, but it would just have to be without in the next two weeks. We well, that's when we, we ask for, some, we ask for summer and fall or just summer? So. You could just request. The <laughs> thing about associated students is that if you have a request, like an event in the in the spring, you can request money in each of those different time periods. Yeah. But the thing is, because of it being a specific <coughs> program and not pr part of an Office of Student Life organization, an executive would probably need to come propose it or something like that. That's so right. working with a new EVPLA is really important in getting this completed. Yeah. Wait, so I have a question. So that 127000 that's money, that's for fiscal year 17-18, or that's unallocated from this past year? No. That's the, okay, that would be a rollover. That's that's different. So Senate unallocated, which basically means that like we have all these monies we've got these lock-ins, yeah. we receive a certain amount from students. Yeah. Right? And then from there they should shake everything down into each of these boards, commissions, units, and all of the like DSP caps, everything, right? And then from there the remaining balance goes into Senate unallocated, which is basically kind of like a surplus fund of what finance and business is. So finance and business allocates a certain amount of funds to the Office of Student Life. But all of those minutes are still approved by the Senate, so the Senate maintains a certain amount where can, it can override exceptions to the finance, finance and business code, and also um, provide money or like uh, approve finances or approve money for executives when executives would never go to like the finance and business committee because they're not an OSL organization, yeah. but they still need those finances approved outside of their regular. Budgeting. Yeah. No, I get that. My <laughs> question was, that's for fiscal year 17, 18. Let me just check the date. I could find out in just two seconds when I look at my minutes. Sorry. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I, I, and maybe you did answer my question. I'm just making sure this isn't like Senate has a $127,000 pot that they have to spend by the end of this year, by the end of this Senate year. No. no. no, no, no. Okay. Okay. Just making sure. Uh -oh. Yeah, and the new budget, too. Um, yeah, I can get the exact amount, but it doesn't really matter. It's just more to the point that they have money, but it's just more of like having the executive support you and how much we need. I don't think they're going to provide the same amount as a donor would. There's no way because of a lot of other reasons. But um, also, each of the boards, commissions, and units can also give money to certain projects. So, like, if theoretically, like, like, if we wanted to throw this forum and it cost money and we wanted to have the Women's Commission involved in it, they could also pitch for it. So certain boards, commissions, and units can work towards each That's project right. to get money. Okay. So it's just a lot of asking for funding, but it's a pretty simple way to gather funds for a small thing. Mm -hmm. right. yeah, so do you have advice on action that should be taken in these next two weeks to try to get funding? Like, any, anything specific that, that perhaps should be made in the motion to me? Um, we would need to... Acting. Can you come back to me in about 30 seconds Absolutely. once I find the budget? Sorry, time. thank you. Um, Director Grant? Yeah, well, I mean, I, I guess I'm still a little confused on the university funding of this program. Is that when, you know, it, what is the process by which we have to ask them if they are willing to continue funding this program into the summer quarter? We just write him a letter and said, yo, do you have a donor? Is that a thing? <laughs> well, well, one thing I'll point out is in the memorandum of understanding, of understanding that we have um, entered into, it does make it clear that this program is intended to last through the summer months. Okay. Uh, we've had some uh, questions about when that ends, but okay. <laughs> we've made it clear that it, it's pretty apparent that it, it is expected to go beyond uh, the, end, the end of spring quarter. Okay, so then so what is the what is the a letter and clarify then? funding for the summer quarter? Well, okay. there's been no funding allocated. Oh, I thought it went through the summer quarter. The program does, but it says, um, wait, I actually, I have a copy of that. Yeah. Wait, so there is a okay, yeah, it, it, George Ray explicitly even stated, like, but we don't have money past spring. But yeah, yes, he did make that explicit. <laughs> okay, but we were talking about the finance issue, and we were talking about that later, so sorry, I got confused. Yes, okay. Um, Here, I need to skim this real quick, and I'll be ready to record. Okay. 
I've got two directors skimming things. Well, for what it's worth in terms of uh, lobbying the Associated Students Senate and BCUs uh, to get them on board with this project, um, I would. I think that's definitely something that we should consider. And you're right now, it won't yield as much money as a donor, but mm -mm. Um, I can find out all I, the I think in terms too. of getting that, it, it's also valuable in terms of getting that buy into the project. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I mean, you know, this program, if, you know, our original vision, I think, for this program, when I first started hearing about it and started talking to people about it, was that this eventually would become like a corollary to UC DC or UC Sacramento Center mm -hmm. in an event it would provide the same sort of public service experience uh, except on the local level and you know yeah. I think that it's a powerful argument yeah. for uh, student groups to be involved in funding that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Susan. I have a question. Um, I oversee the payroll for the I think that'll be it's something a, for you to contact outside. Do you have a card? <laughs> Do you have a card? I can connect you to. Yeah, I'll but, just email um, you. But yeah, so I've, I've looked at um, the... I didn't know if that was something I Cindy will spread you a check. <laughs> we, we can't do that here, though. Um, that's your involvement. Yeah, um, that's my other... But um, as far as the memorandum of understanding, it says item 7 starts off, the Office of Special Assistant for Isla Vista will have responsibility for securing funding and administering payments to students. Um, based on that, I actually, I mean, I'm, I'm really confused as to what our next move should be. Because in this agreement that we've entered into, um, I think it makes it pretty clear that we're not the ones who are supposed to be going out yeah. and funding this. But then also we haven't received any, any, uh, anything from Office of the Special Assistant to say that funding has been secured. Um, and I would say we should just contact them and ask them if funding has been secured for the summer. Quarter. I agree. Mm -hmm. I love that, but we need to figure out who to contact because um, we, I mean, Susan, is it okay if I? Yeah. That's a contact Dr. Yeah. <laughs> I'll let you know if we have the money or uh, not. Okay, <laughs> I, I just, because I know we can't, uh, the actual special assistant is our board colleague who yeah, we yeah. can't contact <laughs> on it, but it's okay if I contact you? Sure. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. And also, just Like yeah. the interns you have now are, are I mean, necessarily the five that you intend to have in the summer. Absolutely. No, thank you. And that's um, why it's important for us to talk about um, the recruitment um, going forward. Um, and so, but, so I think there might be a, a bit of different parts of the direction to come out of this, but one thing, um, if you all want to direct me, I will contact the Office of the Special Assistant to inquire about um, funding that has been secured or is being secured for um, for the internship program for the summer months. Director Brandt. I move that Brandt. we direct the board president to inquire uh, the Office of the Special Assistant for Isla Vista Affairs on how the acquisition of funding for the summer internship program is going. Okay. Seconded. Seconded. Um, mm -hmm. And Will, as soon as you have that, read it back, please. Can we have ask the instead of inquire? For I, I like inquire. The. Well, just inquire is, you don't inquire, Ethan. You like. Oh, does it, was it with? <laughs> there's no, there's yeah, no. There oh. You didn't have a <laughs> verb oh, in there. Okay. You said inquire. Okay, so inquire yeah. with. Yeah. Um, 
Um, and then I heard determine. That wasn't part of the motion. What what part was that? Determine the funding. Um, whether or not funding exists. Okay, so read read back that last part. Yeah. Um, so uh, direct president of the um, direct president to ask the university or the UCSB office of the special assistant to uh, determine the funding for the summer session of the teacher program. Should I remove determine and switch it to? I think he asked for inquire with as inquire opposed to with. ask. Okay. okay. So inquire with the office okay. of the special assistant, not or the university, just the office of the special assistant for Alabama State Affairs about funding secured for the summer internship program. That's Probably. essentially it. Do you think you have that? Sort of. Um, OK. Well, we got to get the exact. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> the direct president to inquire with the Office of the Special Assistant um, of Vila Vista Affairs. Of, uh, the Special Assistant of Vila Vista Affairs. That wasn't. Special Assistant of Alabama Affairs um, regarding the funding of the summer internship program, summer session of internship program. Yes. Right. But is it written exactly how you just said it? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. I'm comfortable with that. Are you all? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and again, that was made by Grant made by me, seconded, seconded by, by Freeman. Okay. Any public comment? Uh, go ahead. So if funding of request to this AS Senate needs to be made within two weeks. Does this action give the board enough time to reconvene and then potentially vote on that? Well, what we just no, determined based on the MOU is it's not our role to do it. It's more our role just to make sure, just to know what's going on. Because um, while I, I would have no problem being directed to go to associated students to solicit funding, it would be breaking with the system we put in place um, for the office of the special assistant to do it. Also, they sh could they they have to be doing it inter inter interdependently. Like we can't go because we're not part of the university. Do you get what I'm saying? So like yeah. the EVPLA can, Ethan can't. Do you get what I'm saying there? We're not an organization that's under the purview of the university. So I guess my question is then if the response is that there hasn't been any real attempt to secure funding, what is the step? From there because what do you mean? Well, I think we cross that bridge when we come to yeah. it. I mean, yeah. I think it's clear in the MOU that it is the responsibility of the OSAIB to attain funding. Yeah. And we're just trying to figure out what that is. And I think it's also clear that everyone up to this point has made a really good faith effort to Agreed. make this work. Um, so um, I, uh, I, if, if for some reason funding turns out not to be available, I don't think that would be the fault of our partners. But I have no reason to believe it's not going to be available. Director Freeman. And then the letter is particularly being sent to Susan, who already has heard us talk about this, but I will just bring it up maybe. Um, we, otherwise, if it weren't to have been heard, we could have explicitly stated in the letter um, something about asking associated students for money, just to, the, like, to, just to give them some direction. You can imagine if, if they weren't in the room hearing us, they could receive the letter and be like, no, we haven't. It's like, oh, well, instead they receive a letter that says, have you looked into the funding yet? Um, we were really hoping you might have talked to associated students. They might go, oh, okay, we can do that. Yeah. I think we're good. Yeah. Right. Any other board discussion? Any other public comment? Just me a question. Um, the of responsibility of the um, office of the special assistant to secure the funding, does that, I mean, we have to do it in order to pay because the payroll is out of UCSB. So is that what secure is, or is the responsibility to secure mean that we go solicit, we have to find the money and get it? Oh, I think absolutely finding it. That was um, how it was presented to this board. Certainly. Mm -hmm. um, ye, uh, unless, does anyone else have a different interpretation? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that's a really good question, but um, that was always uh, our, our understanding, to my knowledge, uh, Director Peter. The word secure would make me believe that you were correct, but I, it, as far as I'm concerned, we, it was not presented to the board. I have no clue what that means. Okay. I, I, mean, was. I, 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 I think it definitely was. was. It, I think it really was. Uh, Director Hedges, did you? That was my understanding, too. Cool. I just thought, thought that <coughs> it's, you know, through the fall quarter that they're going to secure the funding. and mm -hmm. Right. So we're just checking up to yeah. make sure it's in place. Just, just 
status check. Mm -hmm. Certainly the, the precedent has been set that before Associated Students was reached out to by OSAIV, not us, and the other funding was secured by OSAIV. And so since that also falls in line with the word secure, it does seem like, like based on how I would then want to read that contract, I would say yes. You're supposed to talk to associated students. But then, then I would, uh, I would assume we're not going to expand this program over the summer unless we ask them to get more funding for five. Right. I think we should keep the, the current. Just a current three. I do. Okay. Um, and that's something we can discuss here too. I mean, I think if we were to expand it, would um, be dependent on more directors uh, getting involved, yeah. which right. is something that I think we're, that would be totally cool. Um, hasn't entered the discussion yeah. yet, though. Is, is anyone who isn't currently look, working with an intern looking to? Or is anyone who is currently working with an intern looking to discontinue? Looking to continue. Looking to continue, okay. Looking to continue. Same, looking to continue. Is anyone else looking to begin? Yeah, I have a lot of <coughs> personal stuff happening this summer, so it wouldn't be worth it for me. You don't want to take your intern with you on <laughs> leg trips? <laughs> to Ireland? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh. You're in golfing Ireland. Yeah, why not? Can I come? Awesome. <laughs> Thanks for your invite. Um, okay, um, so anyway, just read this back to us one more time and then we'll go. So it's to direct the president to inquire with the Office of Special Assistant of Ireland Vista Affairs regarding uh, the funding for the summer session of the internship program. Fantastic, okay. Uh, public has commented, nothing more. Okay, no more board discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Uh, so ordered, so that's 6 0 with uh, Director Thurlow um, absent. Okay. Now, within this, um, I would like if I could receive some direction to uh, contact the Department of Political Science to initiate the recruitment process for, um, for, this, for the summer. But also, within this, um, we need to talk about are we going to have any. Um, carry over, um, which I think there could be a lot of benefit for carry over should any interns be available and interested in continuing their service. Um, Director Friedman? Um, I see that. Assuming I understand the <coughs> carry over, I think that that is uh, very valuable because you would get, the, the intern gets to the point where they mm -hmm. understand the operations of the district, they understand the, uh, um, the ways in which um, are like the kinds of services and challenges that we have. I mean, uh, maybe they don't want to do it, but providing some kind of uh, priority mechanism by which interns who wish to can choose to do so would be great. Absolutely. Um, anyone else have any thoughts on that? No. I think carry would be yeah. great. I echo. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't want to put anyone on the spot in this room, but are there, out of the interns here, is anyone A, planning on being here for the summer, B, um, interested in continuing, and you're not required to answer this question, but it could be helpful to informing this process. Um, I'm probably not going to be here much longer after like July. Okay. Okay. So we're going to have at least one opening. I will actually be here for uh, the session of A and I'm more delighted um, in actually continuing on. Uh, I think it'd be really, really cool during the summer. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. That's all I need to hear. Okay. Not an interview or yeah, anything, yeah, yeah, but just yeah, yeah. Know, <laughs> know who's in town and yeah. who's not. Okay. Um, yeah. So, so with that, we can assume that there, there will be at least some recruiting that needs to be done. Mm -hmm. um, so, Director Brandt? Yeah, I have a motion. Okay. Uh, uh, I move to authorize the board president to work in consultation with the Department of Political Science um, to develop. How about to initiate the recruitment process? To initiate process. the recruitment process. For the summer internship. <laughs> for the summer internship program. Thank you. Plus, yes. Plus you. Thank you. Including Woo. interns willing to carry over. Should we add that? We should leave that out. Leave that out. Because there's a chance that the Department of Political Sciences are not our students, are not our problem. Because oh. they graduated, okay. potentially. Well, well, I think I, I know what I need to know. Yeah, yeah. I'll, uh, I'll, yeah. yeah. I mean, the I MOU says that the DPS works it in consultation with Whatever us, you want to so do with it, yeah. you know, cool. doesn't matter. To so, me. Uh, Will, if you <laughs> could just read it back yeah. to so us. So, I have authorized the board president to work with the Office of Political Science to initiate the internship recruitment process over summer <coughs> session. For the summer, For the summer session. session. Perfect. And, uh, session or sessions, plural? 
it's considered one session on the academic it's term. C, right? It's yeah, the session whole C. thing is considered. Like when you look at. Um, uh, no, he's he's right. I was looking at this earlier. Cool. Um, is there a second Wait. motion? Second. Thanks, Ned. Cool. No problem. Awesome. There was one uh, one part there that threw me off. Um, so I have authorized the board president to work with the Office of Political Science. To oh, Department of Political Science. That was it. Department. Of yes. Gotcha. Cool. Friendly. Thank you. Um, friendly. Friendly. Yeah. Great. Um, <laughs> any uh, public comment? Any more board comment? Ooh. And and then there's the word initiate, right? Yeah. Great. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? So ordered. 6 0 with uh, Director Thurlow absent. Um, all right. Anything, any other direction we want to give with, with this item? None. Not that I have. Okay. Um, so I will uh, immediately uh, contact both the OSAID and Department of Political Science regarding these matters. Thank you. Uh, are we ready to move past this agenda item? Mm -hmm. Okay, and I'll also say that in uh, in my discussions with the Department of Political Science, I'll I'll say that we're looking to largely maintain the same structure that we have, um, with the same directors mm -hmm. working yeah. on the program. Cool. And yeah. All right, now uh, future meeting dates and future agenda items. So as uh, Director Thurlow started earlier, we'll have a community. Uh, roles and responsibilities, um, discussing insurance and hopefully receiving a presentation from um, insurance, uh, and then office space, both acquiring and supplying it, and um, a discussion on um, accounts that the CSD has and um, procedures for deposits and withdrawals. Awesome. Um, yeah. Any. Thing else. Okay. I just have one simple question. You know, we had our special meeting and we got into that voting requirement that when you have a quorum of five, you really have two no votes against you already for the people that didn't attend because you had to get it. Is, is that is that a standard rule? That you yeah, that's per law. Um, that's that's per law. For what, for what law? Are you talking it's about quorum? CSD yeah, code. quorum. I just looked at it. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so regardless, well, you don't have to explain. I don't know if it's on oh, the okay. agenda. We can explain it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's if you want it on the agenda. Just to explain. Oh, you want it on the agenda? No, I don't need. Oh, it on okay, the agenda. good. If, it, if we're all right to discuss it, I'd be happy to send you the code piece. You That'd be cool. Okay. I'd like oh, to yeah. read it. Okay, that's fine. Um, all right. Awesome. Um, I have an agenda item, um, and I think this is something we're going to continue to speak about in formation committee. Mm -hmm. So uh, it might mesh well with whatever recommendations the committee puts forward, if they put anything forward. But in any event, I think that we need to have an item about uh, recruitment of a general manager, um, whether <laughs> that GM is an employee, a volunteer, independent contractor. We need to get the ball rolling on this. Because, as I said during my board report, um, and as I said during our conversation about administrative things, like that, I think needs to be our number one priority: is getting this structure in place. Awesome. <coughs> awesome. Um, if I think of anything else, I can forward it to you, mm -hmm. and that goes for Correct. all directors. Nothing else here that someone wants to add. Okay. Thank yeah. You. In the near future, we should have a policy being approved to formalize this process a little more. I'll throw a plug for that out there. Um, but okay, so no more uh, agenda. What's the date of our next meeting? Um, the next meeting, the next regularly scheduled meeting is June 6, uh, 2017. Uh, and it'll take place in this room. Same time, same place. Uh, when is it? June 6. And, uh, but then the special Which meeting of the town hall will be on May 30th, so that'll take place Correct. before. Yeah. And uh, I move to adjourn. Okay. Second. Second. So, m motion to adjourn made by Grant, seconded by Jordan. Any public comment? Any board comment? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? So, ordered 6 0. Uh, Director Thurlow absent. We adjourn this meeting at 9 42 p.m. Thank you.